Hey everybody, I'm Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com, and this is our next Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 437. Welcome to all of you who are just joining me for the first time. I'm excited to have you here, and if you just happen to be part of our live chat going on, which is during the premiere of our class, Saturday morning, 8 a.m. sunny California time, 11 a.m. in New York, or 4 p.m. in the United Kingdom, you'll see a live chat going on over here. Please feel free to chime in and say hello. Uh, my name is and I'm from, and I am sure that there is a whole host of us that will be greeting you back, welcoming you to, to part of our live chat. Now this class is a do's and don'ts class and that means this is a comprehensive class on a new product that has come to market. Not only will it be a do's and don'ts class, but I'll be featuring at some point down the line <laughs> my latest collection of simply defined kaleidoscope layering dyes. The class was supposed to be just kaleidoscope layering dyes, but well, I heard you, you emailed, you called, you asked, you said, could you please show us the Sizzix switch machine and what it does and how to use it? And I've had a Sizzix switch machine in my possession for a little bit of time now. So we've played with it. The girls have had amazing time with it. And I thought, okay, I've done Sizzix machines in the past do's and don'ts classes. In fact, one of the classes has 1.1 million views and one of the other classes is getting close to that. <laughs> So I thought I'll do a do's and don'ts on the Sizzix switch machine. And again, this is gonna be a comprehensive class, so you may not be able to watch it in one sitting, but I'm also not going to shortchange you. I need you to feel confident in your decision on whether you buy this machine or not. So I'm going to take you all the way through from the very beginnings of Ellison and Sizzlets and Sizzlet strips and we're going to be playing with so many different types of dyes and embossing folders by several different manufacturers that when we are done, you're going to either be, oh my gosh, I've got to have it, or, hey, it's nice, but I'm good for right now, and <laughs> I'm going to spend my money on something else crafty-wise, or it could be something that you need to save for. The idea is to give you as much information as I can so that you make the most informed decision possible. It's also important for you to know that I am not a paid spokesperson for Sizzix or Ellison. I am not on their payroll and I am not affiliated with any manufacturer, any manufacturer at all. These are my YouTubes, they're my opinions, they're my thoughts, they are unscripted and unedited, so what you see I'm going to be right there with you. Whatever comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth and whatever mistakes I make, you're going to be along for that journey because that's part of the teaching process. Really, if everything is so picture perfect, if if you have that that apple pie that you made and you put it into to the oven and then poof, there's one right next to it that somebody else made for you that's perfect and you pull it out, really what does that teach somebody? So so these are my thoughts, my opinions, and and uh, not paid for or endorsed by or, you know, I'm sure Ellison is watching this YouTube probably a little bit nervous. <laughs> Most manufacturers are with my YouTubes because they never know what's, what's, what's going to happen, what I'm going to say. But what I will always promise you is the most unbiased opinion that I have. It's important to me that you know I've got your back and that I value you and that this is a big decision for this machine. This isn't something that is a point of purchase, $1.99 next to the cash register, ooh, wouldn't that be cute to have? This is an investment and it's your money. And I take that very seriously no matter where you buy the machine from. Yes, we'll have it for sale, absolutely. We don't have a lot of them because I wasn't planning on doing this this YouTube. So it I there wasn't a lot of them for them to sell me. <laughs> Everybody else already bought them all up, but that's okay. Yes, we will have them at an amazing value. Yes, we will offer expedited shipping. 
the YouTube Yummies this week is going to be very small. It's going to be the two Switch machines and it's going to be my dyes and my products. The Switch machines will not be shipping from Scrapbooking Made Simple. They will be shipping from Ellison on our behalf. So when you place your order, we will, we're going to wait until this YouTube ends. Once this YouTube is over with next Saturday, we will gather all the orders up that have only product from the YouTube category. So my dies, my dies in the switch machine, just the switch machine, just Stacy tape. <laughs> if it's from the YouTube yummies category, we're going to process those orders and get them out to you. Because again, I'm not responsible for shipping those switch machines. I'm going to get Ellison those orders. It'll take them, give them at least a, 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 a two weeks or so to get them all out to you but we're going to push them through as fast as we can. Now I do have winner winner chicken dinner to talk about. <laughs> and then we're gonna talk a little bit more about the switch machine before I get started. So let's talk winner winner chicken dinner if you haven't already turned me off. And if you have, that's okay, bye. And if you haven't, I will ask one favor. Even if you don't watch this entire YouTube, can you please fast forward and watch the girls? Uh, at the very end, I have the most beautiful samples ever out of my dyes. The SMS girls, they put their heart and they put their soul in making beautiful things for me to show you. And again, this YouTube was supposed to be about my dyes and really the focus has changed, but I don't want them to lose. I don't want them to feel, I don't know, how do I say this? I want them to know how appreciative I am of their hard work. And, and if you could just scroll all the, just, even if you don't want to listen to me, just fast forward all the way to the end to look at their samples. That would mean a lot to me because it meant a lot to them for the time and effort and the love that they put into it. I would hate for this YouTube to go forward and everybody clicks off before you see the beautiful things they created to share with you. All right, so let's do winner, winner, chicken dinner, and then I have to talk to you again. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so winner, winner, chicken dinner. We always have two winners per YouTube. And, well, our, this is from YouTube 436. These two people pay, posted a comment on this YouTube. A comment below. Live chat does not count. And you have to subscribe to leave a comment. So there's a little heart over here. Just subscribe, leave a comment below, and next week you might find yourself a winner, winner, chicken dinner with a $25 gift card. Are you ready? Our first winner is Lola Rogers. Hello, Lola. Congratulations to you. You are a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, but you are not alone. Our second winner, winner is Kathleen, Kathleen Grogan. Hello, Kathleen Grogan. Congratulations to you. You and Lola have both received a $25 gift card. It's already in your online account. Have fun spending it. You may apply it to a switch machine. You may use it to get one of my die sets. Who knows? You spend it any way that makes your heart happy. And let's do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance, okay? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. Congratulations to the both of you. And again, if you want a chance to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner, because you just never know when I'm going to call your name, you must post a comment below. And it can be about anything as long as it is kind. Kind is the key word. You can tell me how your day was. You can tell me about your fur babies, your grandkids, your spouse, your whatever, as long as it's nice. Then we're good. Okay, so back to the switch machine. It is here. Hold on. You're like, can you at least show it to us? Yes, I can show it to you. All right, there it is. Oh my, <laughs> so normally I zoom in much closer than this. <laughs> and um, well, um, I didn't wear a girdle today, so if my tummy's hanging over a little bit, you'll forgive me. And yes, I do still call it a girdle. I am not posh enough to have Spanx. <laughs> That's out of my price, like, my price. <laughs> but a girdle, absolutely. So um, here's the machine. This is the Tim Holtz black machine. We'll have the black and the white machine for you. There is a difference in what you get with the machine, but the machine themselves they're absolutely identical, absolutely identical, no difference. 
The white machine, however, is not Tim Holtz branded. It's Sizzix branded and it gives you free things. See, I'm the type of girl, I'd want the free things and I'd take the white machine, but you may be the biggest Tim Holtz fan ever and <laughs> want the black machine and forego the free things, the, the extra dyes and the embossing folders that they give you with the white machine. Both machines will be on sale here at Scrapbooking Made Simple for a price that is Wahoo could chew. They are limited because I didn't pre-order any of these. I wasn't planning on doing it, but the price is stellar. I'm trying to keep crafting affordable for you because gosh, if you have a machine, well, hopefully then you start buying people's dyes and embossing folders. Absolutely. Both machines are warrantied. Both of them have the same type of warranty on them. When you buy your machine, you're going to get a one year warranty right off the bat. Don't lose your receipt. Tape it to the bottom of the box, tape it to the bottom of the machine. Put the receipt someplace where you're going to be able to find it. However, if you register your machine, once you buy it, go online to Sizzix.com, register your machine. They're going to give you an additional two years worth of warranty, so you have three in totality. That's an important thing to know register your machine. <laughs> Why only get one year of warranty when you can get three? What can void the Sizzix warranty? This is also important. I know it's not sexy and it's not, I'm not creating anything, but this is important information you need to know when you're investing into something that is inexpense without question. If you use other manufacturers tools, in their machine. So if you use a magic mat in their machine, it will void the warranty if it causes a problem. If you use somebody else's platform in the machine, it will void the warranty. Sizzix products are made for Sizzix products and they give you the platform and they give you the cutting plates. So use what comes with the machine and it will not void your warranty. You want to play with a magic mat and I, there's a couple of them out on the market now. Know that if there's a problem, that's on you. That's, that's, that's on you. That's the choice you made. But you should know that the machine is going to work beautifully without any other added tool from another manufacturer. Now, if you're using Sizzix tools and you're using other manufacturers dies or embossing folders and there's a problem it's under warranty it's not about the die or the embossing folder it's about the platforms and the plates because every manufacturer's die cutting machine is slightly different just like every die on the market is slightly different the micrometer it it could be a hundredth of a difference between perhaps my dies and Sizzix dies or Spellbinders dies and everybody's embossing folders are slightly different. So that's not the problem. Go ahead, use every die you've got, use every embossing folder you have. Just keep to using Sizzix tools inside any of the Sizzix machines. I'm sure just like if you had a Spellbinders or a Gemini, you wanna use their tools, their plates, their platforms in their machine. So that covers warranty and what will void it and what will not. My gosh, pull all your dies out and run it through your machine. Perfectly fine. Shipping time. Well, I already went over shipping time from price. Price you'll see once you log on to our site. I'm not going to discuss price here. And I'm going to encourage you if you have a local independent retailer to shop with them. There are some very large online companies who could squash scrapbooking made simple like a bug. We all happen to start with the letter S, all of us. <laughs> but two of them could really squash us like a bug and that's okay. I know my place in the pecking order and I am perfectly fine with it, that. There's also some major mass stores that are going to carry it and, and they're gonna have phenomenal prices on it too. But if you are lucky enough to still have an independent retailer to go talk to, go talk to them and see if they can get the machine for you or if they already have it. They will appreciate and value your support. If then you don't have a, a local independent retailer, 
then go to a mass store or shop online. Absolutely, if that's the only that that's the option that you're left with, well, you got to do what you got to do, and not everybody is lucky enough to still have an independent retailer. Okay, so the machine is going to come with a manual, and you are going to want to read it. I didn't. <laughs> you are going to want to read it. I'm a let's sit down and play type of girl. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sit down and we're going to play. I'm going to scroll on down. I'm going to show you some quick samples and then we're going to start today's class. Please remember I am not paid by Ellison or Sizzix. I'm not, uh, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. This is my opinion and, and whatever happens in this YouTube, all the mistakes my YouTubes are unscripted, unedited, and we're just, we do this together because that's, that's how we all learn, right? Right. Okay. I'm going to tilt on down. We're going to get started for today. This is going to be, this is going to be one wild ride and we're going to go back to memory lane for some of it, but I sure hope you enjoy it. And I sure hope you find it useful. That would be even more important to me that you walk away from this class and go, wow. That was really, really helpful. That would make my heart so happy. <laughs> Hi, everybody at Ellison. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get started. <laughs> I know they're not having a watch party, but <laughs> it would be funny. See, I needed a girdle. Okay, well, I'm gonna zoom in just a little more, but then I'm gonna have to zoom out once I um, once I just get the machine out. Okay, so sample time. Here's one of the samples of the newest simply defined kaleidoscope dies. And what's a kaleidoscope die? It's layering dies. They are A2 in size and they are so value priced. I do three sets. When I do them, <laughs> I do them four times a year. Isn't that absolutely stunning? And yes, they all are gonna work with your brand new Sizzix Big Shot Switch Machine. Absolutely. Look at that. Well, I love this one. But then I love the one I'm going to show you right next to it. Wait, wait, wait. So this is the full the full die. All four layers in here. But here, we took, well not me, Belinda, took the background from the die that has the daisies and just one of the Die, well, two of the dies from the, the walkthrough in the forest. Isn't that pretty? So, I mean, same dies, totally different look. All up to you. Let me put these back where they belong. That's Belinda, and this is Doris, and I think that one's Doris, and this one I think is Elena, and yes, SMS dude James did make a card. Okay, so let me see if I can move it on over and let's bring our machine out. All right, so here it is. This is the black one. It's heavy. It's not something you're necessarily going to want to move around. Um, it is the Tim Holtz version. There is a white machine and the white machine is exactly the same, only you're going to get a few free gifts. It opens in the front. It has a storage unit under here. Um, I called them today and I said, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you know, first off, I never even look at the storage unit, but you can't fit dies down here, not really. But you can put your tools down there, maybe your washi tape and store that there if that's something that you wanna do, especially if you're going to be taking this out to a crop or over to a friend's house. It's kind of convenient to store some of your tools down there without question. It does have a reverse button. It does have a, well, it has a reverse, an automatic reverse, so that if the machine says, oh no, it's too thick, it's going to send it back. You wanna keep in mind that it's got an on and off button and you wanna unplug, if, you, if you're plugged into the wall, my recommendation is when you're not using it, just unplug the machine from the wall. You ask why. Well, from a girl who had, house, uh, had a house fire due to an electrical fire, 
Anything that's plugged into the wall at the time of the fire is deemed unsalvageable because there's no guarantee it wasn't shorted. So you want to unplug it if you can, if it's convenient, when you're not using it. It feeds through automatically. You don't have to hold any button down to feed anything through it. And it spits it right out the back. This little, this little lip here lifts up on its own and the die just comes right out the back. It's pretty simple to use, pretty um, sleek in its styling. Its footprint is kind of small for what you get, and this will do every type of die on the market. Steel rule dies, the thick, the thick dies, yes. Framelits, sizzlets, chemically etched dies, embossing folders, you name it, it's all going to fit through here. So if you are a die cutter and you have lots of different types of dies to put through, this is going to handle all of it. It also is not six inches wide, it is wider. So it's going to allow you to do your larger plus dies from Sizzix or your larger embossing folders. Absolutely, you're going to be able to get them through because it is a wider mouth, a wider feed. Um, what else can I tell you about it? I think maybe we'll just start to use it and we'll go from there. And I think I'm going to go back just a little bit more. Oh, see, I need my girdle. <laughs> now, what I like about the black machine is that I like the look of the black. What I don't like about the black machine is that everything shows. Every little piece of, of lint or fuzz or paper, it, it, almost clings to it and I I would want to continually wipe it off so for me I probably would choose the white machine because it doesn't show the fingerprints and the I mean the paper it just it just drives me crazy you may not be like that and you may just fine with it but you never know now what comes with the machine let's start with that and regardless if you buy the white or the black you're going to get two clear cutting plates and you can see the size of them. This is a standard, look at how old and awful mine are. These are standard cut plates. This is the new size for the switch. It is like having a Big Shot Plus machine. Those are the same size, I believe they're the same size cutting plates as a Big Shot Plus. Big difference in size, big difference in area that you can work with. You will get two of them because you're going to need two of them. Top and bottom because we always sandwich things. You're also going to get your A plate. And your A plate is important because this is what lets you do chemically etched dies or wafer dies. What's nice is that first off you see warning, warning, warning Will Rogers down here. This tells you do not use this plate if you're going to be embossing. They really, now they have it in, I don't know how many languages, one, two, three, four, five, six. They have it in seven languages. <laughs> do not emboss. <laughs> and that's super important because this is not an embossing platform. You get your base plate. And your base plate's going to give you all the directions of things that you can do on your base plate. Embossing folders being one of them. If you ever are in question, all you have to do is look. Look at the look at the platforms. It tells you, it even tells you if you should be cutting face up or if you should be cutting face down or if you want to use a precision base plate. Can you use a precision base plate in this? Absolutely. Can you use a magnetic platform? Absolutely. So, even while it is a new big shot switch machine, you do have the opportunity to still use all of your tools from your Big Shot machine or your Big Kick machine. I am absolutely going to be using a precision base plate in this machine. With the Plus machine, they said, you know, hey, don't try and use your, your, your precision base plate. With a Plus, the pressure is too much. But in this machine, this machine is calibrated and, and specced so that you can take advantage of using all your Sizzix tools in it. And one of the nice things I have to say about being able to use your smaller plates is that you can keep your larger plates 
for larger things. These cost way more than these. <laughs> I think a set of two clear plates is like 11 bucks at Sizzix. I have no idea how much a set of two of the larger ones are. I can guarantee you it's more than $11. So if you can use your plates that you already have, the smaller plates, and save your larger plates for when you're doing larger things, you're going to get more value out of your machine. It's nice that you don't have to go and rebuy everything. You can use what you have. That's a huge benefit to me. So with the machine, you've got the A plate, you've got the base plate, and you use the A plate and the base plate when you are going to be doing chemically etched dyes or wafer dyes. You've got the two clear plates, and this is what it looks like with the Tim Holtz machine. It's a little different in color when you use the white switch machine. The product is still the same. It's just that you're not going to get, you're still gonna get two clear plates there. They're here, those aren't gonna change. And your base plate isn't going to change, but the color of your Sizzix A plate is going to change. And gosh, what I think I noticed most about this, the first thing, is that it doesn't have the warning, 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 warning sign on it. I would somehow put something on here that says, do not emboss. Do not use with embossing folders something along that line here so that you have the same warning, warning, warning as on Tim Holtz. Now you're probably asking, well, why does this one have it and not this one? My guess is this was manufactured before this, that Tim's was manufactured after the main switch one, the main switches were manufactured. So just put something on here that says, do not use embossing folders and you're done. Other than that, everything else is exactly the same. However, with the white machine, you do get added bonuses. You get a free Sizzix 3D embossing folder. You get a framelits set for free. You get a thinlets set, well, a couple thinlet sets for free. All of this comes with the white machine that does not come with the Tim Holtz, even though they're priced exactly the same. So it's up to you. Do you want the free goodies with the white machine or do you want the black machine with Tim's name on it? Entirely up to you. There's no right, there's no wrong. They both are amazing. And Tim has done a beautiful job in, well, it's black. So <laughs> I mean, he's done a great job in his part in this machine, whatever part that is. Wahoo kachoo Tim. So now that we've shown what comes with the two different machines and that they're priced equally the same, let's play with one. I know we're a half an hour in and I haven't cut anything, but sometimes it's about knowing, cutting is the easiest, cutting's gonna be the easiest part. <laughs> cutting's gonna be the easiest part to this whole machine, absolutely knowing more about the machine and what you can do and what the warranty covers and 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 the difference between the two and and what you get for free and that is not that that's not just out there that you have to be told cutting paper that's going to be the easiest thing with this with this machine either machine that you buy which is why we're going to spend a little time on paper but then we're going to really get into textures and fabrics and textiles to see how far we can push it. <laughs> okay, back down we go. <laughs> All right, it's a good thing I've got my new, my new uh, camera mount, <laughs> although since it's so easy. Now, I'm gonna start, let's go ahead and I'm gonna start with, um, bring this over my way. And this so over my way. I'm gonna start with some of the oldest Sizzix product out there. This is a forever ancient old Sizzix uh, uh, sizzlet die. I mean, this is from time gone by. And you may have a bunch of these. They used to do a lot of alphabets that were sizzlets and you got the whole alphabet in this little container. You may still use them. Can you use a Sizzix Sizzlet die in this machine? Absolutely you can. Let's go ahead and now 
I don't know if they reference. Let's see. Uh, I don't know if they reference sizzlets on their platform. Impresslets, thinlets, switchlets. I don't see anything about little little old sizzlets. They they were a time gone by. Let's grab a piece of paper, and I'm not going to be picky. We're just cutting, so it is what it is. And let's see what happens when we try to die cut this. So I'm going to bring over my, I'm going to keep a do not cut plate. I'm going to put my die face up, put my paper right on top, and another cut plate. And let's see what happens. Now I've got it with the base platform and the A platform. My machine is turned on. I'm going to feed it in, make sure that I'm all squared up. And I tend to put my thumb right on the plates just so they stay in place and send it through. Oh, it did not like that. <laughs> it said, oh no, I don't think so. Did you just see what happened? Let me send it through again. So I've got my base plate. I've got my A plate. I've squared them all up so they're going in straight. I've got my sizzlet die from time gone by. Now I have been doing business with Ellison for close to 20 years. I know I've been through quite a few staff changes and die changes and <laughs> so I have things from time gone by. I'm going to push it in and it's going to self feed. So my hands are off and then it hit that die again and it said, oh no, I don't want that and it backed it right out. I didn't have to push a reverse button, it backed it right out. So that tells me my platform is too thick. I'm, they only give you two choices. It's either the base or the base and the A plate. You're never gonna use the A plate all by itself, never. So it's either the base or the base and the A plate. So I'm gonna put this back over there. I'm gonna move back on. I've got my sizzlet, I've got my paper, I've got my top plate, and now let's send it through again. Okay. And I've now cut out my little whisk. <laughs> Why I have a little whisk, I don't know, but I do. <laughs> and then you put that one in there and you make, you can beat little eggs with your little whisk. So what you might have noticed, and I'll do it again, what you might have noticed is that my plates, my plates, these plates here, wanted to scooch back. That's because the platform, the base platform, is so much bigger that it's not feeding in all at the same time. If I were using the plates that came with it, well, look at that. They line up, they feed in right all right at the same time. They're even a little bit bigger, so it feeds all in. But I'm using the smaller plates because I want to save my larger. So cut plate down, little whisk, paper, or do not cut plate, whisk, paper, and could I cut down? Sure I could. I could flip my dies around and do it the other way. And that's why I kind of hold on right there until I know that it's fed all the way in. And then I know that my plates, my cut plates are not going to move. And done. And lucky me, I have another little whisk. <laughs> so easy to do, even with dies as old as a sizzlet. Now sizzlet dies also came, let me put that away. Actually, I'm going to move that over here because I'm going to end up having a ton of product dies on here. 
Sizzlets also came in strips. Do you all remember these strips from time gone by? I mean, let's see, the skew is probably like a 654 something. Oh, it's a 655. Now they're into 66 numbers, 665s six, and 666s. Six, six, so that tells you how old this is. It's made the same way as the little one that I used, only this is a long strip. Can you use this? Yes, absolutely you can. And there's a couple different ways to use it. First off, we can just put it right down and use our small, our small plates. Let's see that happen, let's do that. So let's cut a piece off. Obviously, obviously the my cutting plates are smaller than the die itself. So I'm only going to be able to cut what is on my cutting plate. I'm not going to get anything here and I'm not going to get anything there. It's not going to cut. There's not enough pressure there because the my cutting plate is not long enough. Can it still be done? Sure. Put my other cutting plate over the top. Bring it up, square it up. I'm gonna make sure that this is in view. Square it up and then let the machine grab it. So I'm showing you this because I want you to see that it cut everything, cut everything beautifully. But because my machine didn't have enough pressure on the ends, it didn't cut past my, my plates. It can't, there wasn't enough pressure there. So can I get it out? Yeah, zoop. Zoop, sound effects required. And now I've got my cute little, my cute little flowers and just a smaller strip. Can I cut a larger strip? Yes, but that means you need to have larger cutting plates. See, the cutting plates are much larger. This will allow me to send it through and cut my entire piece. Let's see. Bring my base platform over because I don't need that A plate. That A plate is going to be too, is that good? That A plate's gonna be too, uh, too tall. It's gonna be too thick. My sandwich will be wrong with that A plate on it. But now I'm using one of the plates that came. I'm using one of the clear plates that came. And gosh, I'm just, my paper's probably just a hair bit short, but we're gonna go for it and see what we get. And a second clear plate over the top. So these are the plates that actually come with the machine. Square them up and oops, square them up and let's send it on through. Hands free. And then it's going to come. right out the back. When it's done, you pull it out and you're good to go. And now I've cut my strip with all the little flowers. So cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> And it 
cut to the full length. But what if you happen to have, again, not anything new, what if you happen to have these plates? These plates were brought out for dies this size. What if you still don't want to use one of your new plates? See, I cut into it. I have now christened, I don't know if you can see it, I've now christened this one. <laughs> what if you still don't want to use your new plates? That's fine. If you've got an old set of XL plates, you can use those. In fact, you can even keep the bottom plate with the big one because you're not cutting into that. You're using that as your do not cut plate. So I could take my die and my paper and I could use one of my old plates to cut. And let's see what happens. Hands free. Look, Ma. And out the back it comes. It's all about having options. And the fact that Sizzix has made the, the machine versatile so that you can use whatever Sizzix cut plates you have, you're not you're not forced to buy a certain size every time they warp or every time you need to replace them. You're able to use what's already in your stash. You've already paid for some of those cut plates. You have. Why should you have to go out and buy new sizes because, well, you got a new machine. That was one of the beautiful things that Ellison did is they made it universal so that any of their cutting plates will go through, allowing you to do some of these old dies that are kind of cute. <laughs> they're old, but they're cute. Well, you get the little flower. So Sizzlet dies have been around for forever. And if you've been die cutting as long as I have, well, you probably have some of these. And now you know you can use them with your switch machine. What's also uh, unique for Sizzix, I'm gonna put this back because we're gonna use this one later. What's also unique for Sizzix was their very first version of what they call impresslets now. They were originally called embosslets and they were the first on the market to come out with something that would die cut and emboss at the same time. Again, they don't make these anymore. They're they're uh, they're gone for a long time. You may find them on eBay or I don't know, but they were metal on the inside. It's actual metal that forces the forces the embossing and cuts at the same time. And they even say put this side down so they tell you which side they want you to cut on. Can you use this with your switch machine. Absolutely. Let's bring over my A plate. Let's bring over a piece of paper. So as you can gather, we're not going to make anything in this class, nothing. And you may want to take notes or reference back this class because there is so much technique in it, so many different dies and how to use them properly. So I'm gonna open this up. It doesn't separate. They're hinged together. I'm gonna open this up and it says put this side down. So I'm gonna follow directions. I'm gonna put that side down and I'm gonna put another my other clear plate on top of it. Now I've got my base plate and my plate A. Bring it over. Now, I don't know if the camera picks this up, but see, all my little paper is getting stuck there and it's all up top here. I, that just, yeah. 
the black looks sleek and chic, but I would just be dusting it all the time. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna square up. I'm gonna kind of hold on to my plates because they're smaller than my entire platform, and I'm gonna send it on through. Oh, it didn't like that. My machine said, wait a minute, I, I, that's not going to work for me. And you don't argue. Do not argue with the machine, okay? Do not argue with the machine. <laughs> what it says goes. Nope, no can do. Okay, so I'm going to take its advice. And the only option I have the only option I have, which is kind of nice when it's limited, is to take off <laughs> my A plate and put that aside. Put it aside. So now I'm working on my base platform, my old do not cut plate. I mean, I'm not using anything new. I didn't pull out fresh, clear, beautiful cut pads. I want you to see that you can use, these are the ones I use every week in every YouTube. I didn't change it up just because I've got a new machine. No, you need to see reality. <laughs> not that beautiful apple pie that came in out of the oven that somebody else baked. The, the, the great British Bake Off baked it for me. I put in the one that nobody would ever eat. <laughs> and let's send it on through again. Again, I'm going to put my finger just kind of on my plates because my plates are smaller than my entire platform. And let's see what happens. Looky there. Instant Presto Magico. Yes, you have to say it too. Instant Presto Magico. <laughs> it's like the machine knew just what I wanted it to do. And let's pull it out. And there's my little cut and emboss. How do you know it's embossed? Well, Now you can see the little wings come up. Now you can see that the heart's embossed, the little wings are embossed, and it was done with my switch machine. Do you have some of these dies? I do. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm Stacy. I'm a die cut, uh, die, die cut hoarder. <laughs> okay, so I'll at least admit to that. Now, you may have something that looks like this. Maybe you got it in a swap. Maybe you bought it off of eBay. Maybe it was in a bundle that you wanted and you didn't know what to do with it. This is the exact same thing as the die I just did, only jumbo size. <laughs> Ellison thought, well, if this is good, Big must be better. So they made big embosslets um, that are extra large in size. These days they are called impresslets. That's the new term. So if you have impresslets, well, hello, you're going to be using them the same way I am using embosslets. I don't know how the 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 its came about. Uh, sizzlets, embosslets, impresslets. Framelits, thinlets. One day I'll get the story on who decided that. <laughs> okay, come on out. Don't be shy. There we go. So this is just a giant version of what we just did. Let's move this one here. I'm going to bring this one back. I'm going to bring this one back. And I'm going to bring this one back. This is a giant version of what we just did. Look at it, it's all metal. I mean, that's all metal. These were expensive when they came out. I mean, I wanna say this was like 25 bucks. And 15 years ago, well, even today, that's a chunk of change for, for this one. That's all it does is this. So let's go ahead and let's put a piece of paper in there.
and let's put it here and let's close it up and then it says feed this way okay well I'm good at following instructions most of the time hopefully mr. SMS is not listening to this <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use my base platform because what happens if I use my A plate? What's going to happen? Okay, tell me what's going to happen. Let me sandwich it and kind of send it on through. Oh, no, you don't. So I'm going to listen to what my machine tells me to do. And I'm just going to use, I'm just going to use my base platform. I'm going to square everything up and I'm not using my big plates. You can if you want to. I just have so many of the small ones. I'm good using my small ones. And then once I know it's done, look at that. I'm not pushing any buttons. I'm not tugging on it. I'm not forcing it through. I'm letting it do the work. Now I saw this machine the first time at Creative World in Germany in 2020. And it was supposed to have been out months, you know, months later it was going to be out. And it took two additional years. Well, in that two additional years, Ellison refined and tweaked and modified and tested and I was very leery about it. I'm like, uh-uh, I don't know about this first one off the, well, let me, let me look at, and I was like, I don't know about this one. My dad warned me. First time a car comes off the, the uh, assembly line, hmm, the first model, first year, hmm, maybe let him get the bugs out. What I didn't know, and I do now, is that in that two years, they were getting the bugs out. They took the time. They didn't, from a manufacturer and a, from a manufacturer's perspective, it's now, 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 get it to market, get it to market, get it to market. Because you don't want somebody else to beat you <laughs> and you want to bring the product to the consumers and make a big splash. So quite often manufacturers will bring something to market before it's ready. Kind of like, what was that? Gray Poupon or, you know, or no, what was it? Um, something not before it's time. Uh, was it wine? <laughs> I don't remember. I just know that even though I saw it back in 2020 and they kept postponing and they kept postponing and they kept postponing the, the launch date, it was because they were working with the machines and they were testing them and they were perfecting them. This is not the first version of the switch machine that was made. It's probably not even the second version of the switch machine that was made. They've probably been through a few versions of it, tweaking and modifying so that when they did bring it to market, they knew they had the product that represented their brand. Now, this is me saying that. That's not, it's not a Sizzix spokesperson saying that. And I was frustrated. It was like, well, I saw, I, I was such a naysayer. <laughs> I'm like, well, who knows what year it's coming out. <laughs> and that's the joke. Uh, I've been told about some product that's coming. And I'm like, yeah, what year would that be? <laughs> but now I understand. I didn't know what I didn't know. So now I know, and it's fair to tell you they were getting the bugs out so you didn't have to. Is that to say that there may not be some issues with some machines? Sure, absolutely, it might happen, but it's gonna happen a whole lot less than if they had rushed a machine to market. I think we all can perhaps remember when Cricut first came to market. <laughs> Just flashbacks. <laughs> okay, so let's go back down again. Sorry, it's a class, and if I don't talk to you, gosh, what's making the noise? If I don't talk to you face-to-face, -face, then I just feel weird about it. 
Okay, so we've got this one. It's embossed. How do you know it's embossed? So these are now impresslets, and they're not made the same anymore. They're made a little different. It's super cute, right? And it came out of this folder that's made with metal that shows you which way to send it through, and it worked fine with your switch machine. Okay, so, so far, so far we have done a very simple sizzlet, which was the little whisk. We did a strip, same thing, same, same process, same, same uh, product, it's just much bigger. We did a little embosslet, and now we've done a big embosslet product that was made years and years ago that still becomes relevant because the machine will accept it. Still stays relevant. You own it. You invested in it. You bought it. Now use it. So now it's time to move along. And what I do want to say about these is that these are made for paper only. They're made for paper only. They're not meant to be used with plastics or anything like that. They won't, they won't cut. Um, they just won't. Let's, let's try a pretty piece of this. This is a plastic. Oh, it's a cool plastic, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you can't tear it. It is a thick, heavy vinyl plastic. Something that you would use maybe for a thick tablecloth. It's very cool. If I put this here and there, I'm just going to try and cut just a little piece of it and over the top and bring my switch machine on over handle would have been nice. Just saying, a handle would have been nice, but I suppose they expect you to leave it in one place and not pull it back out. But a handle would have been nice, but I suppose the motor's there and there's no place to put it. I get it, but a handle would have been nice. <laughs> okay, it did nothing. There's no blade in here to do anything with it. You've got the foam on top, which is used for injection foam, so you can pick it up easy. So you can only do paper when you're working with anything that's got that gray foam over the top or is in the embosslet family. But we need to move on. We need to talk about steel rule dies. Steel who? Steel rule. Okay, so let me go back up. Steel rule dies are dies that originally started, well, Ellison started as an education company. So they sold dies to schools. And if you were ever a room mom, hi, I'm Stacy. I was room mom in a couple of my kids' classes. Um, <laughs> Missy Assign at Sulphur Springs. And anyway, I was room mom. Then sometimes you were sent to like the, the, the teacher's supply area and there would be dies there that you would cut and they would cut the letters to do the bulletin boards and all things like that. That's where Ellison started. And that is still part of their core operation is education, not education like I'm teaching you, but education like our schools and our kids. So steel, S-T-E-E-L, rule, R-U-L-E, dies were the first dies ever made. And after they became, they, they, they got really good at it they decided to commercialize them and make them for me and you for crafters. 
and that's where the dies started in the steel rule category. Now, what does a steel rule die look like? Well, they're thick. Ooh, no, I've got it open at the top. They're thick. Why are they thick? Because they have an actual blade. Let me show you. So, look at how thick this die is in comparison to this. Big difference, world of difference. While these dies don't necessarily, I mean, you can put your finger on them and they're not gonna hurt you. This die has a blade in it. There's a blade that has been uh, formed to the design. And if you step on it, <coughs> if you step on it, you could get hurt. I mean, it could, it could hurt. That's why they put so much foam on the top. When the, the die goes through the machine, the foam compresses down and the blade is able to cut your paper. Let me get a quick drink. All right, so your blade is able to cut your paper. With an actual blade in a die, it means you can do a lot with it. It means that you can take several pieces of paper. Well, let's cut a single piece and then I'm gonna cut several pieces. So here's this one, and let's grab this one, and let's grab this one, and let's grab, I'm just going to push my luck. And I can already hear everybody at Sizzix going, bring it on, because steel rule dies are kind of the workhorse of everything. Now let's cut one, let's cut a pink elephant. Just a plain pink elephant. And because it is thick, what does it remind you of? How about the platform that comes with the machine? Look at how thick it is. Look at how thick my die is. Kind of looks about the same, doesn't it? That's because with the thinner dies that I've been using, you need the platform to get the height to hit the roller that's in the machine. The roller is what's gonna force that pressure onto the die and cut it. But look at this. I've got this die at the same height as my platform. What does that mean? It means I don't need to use this at all. I can just use two clear cutting or two cutting plaids. That's all I need. Let's open it up, bring it back. So I tend to like to cut face up depending on what I'm doing. Sandwich it in between two because I no longer need that base platform. I don't need it because the die is thick enough that it's going to hit the roller all by itself. Now send it on through. And it's gonna come out, come out the back end. And look at how cute. Isn't he darling? And he's got the little heart for an ear. I don't know how low old this die is. It's probably been around for forever and a day, but it's super cute. Steel rule dies tend to be simple shapes. This is a very simple shape because somebody manually, this isn't done by uh, automation or uh, a, a machine that sculpts the metal. This is done by a human being. They take the metal and they sculpt it around the design to do this. So the designs tend to be much simpler than let's say a very intricate die. Oh. Let's say one of my dies. 
There's no way you could make this die here. Any of my dies. Not a chance you could take any of my dies and make them steel rule. It's just not possible. I have too much, uh, they're too intricate. There's no way to get the metal all around. And if you did do it, the die would be $400. So steel rule dies tend to be very simple in shape or simpler in shape than a, a wafer die, but because it has the blade, you have an opportunity to do so much more. Let's see. So, let's cut some paper. So now I'm cutting, I don't know, five sheets of paper, six sheets of paper. We're going to see what happens. The machine is either going to say yay or it's going to say nay. So now instead of one pink piece of paper, I've got pink, I've got sky blue or uh, was it eggshell, I've got a teal, I've got a lavender and a red. Let's see what happens. Worst case scenario, it backs itself out and says, oh no, Stacy, nice try. <laughs> Best case scenario is it takes them all through at once. see what we've got. <laughs> well, I might even be able to go through a few more sheets of cardstock because that cut those pretty darn simple. Now I've got a whole little, look at how cute are they. <laughs> I've got a whole little line of elephants. All cut out with just one pass. Done. Can you do this on a standard Big Shot machine? Yes, if you still have a crank machine. Everything I'm showing you here on the new switch can be used with your standard Big Shot machine. A crank, a vagabond, what do you have? It's the, it's the type of the die and the pressure from the machine. The only advantage here to the switch is it's wider and it's self-feeding and it auto-corrects and sends it back. It is smarter than we are and we must accept that. <laughs> As is my phone. <laughs> so, I was able to cut through five sheets without even blinking an eye. So easy peasy and done. But what about somebody else's steel rule die? This is a this is a spellbinder's die. The only two companies that really make steel rule dies, I just see my tummy. It's driving me crazy. <sighs> I really needed that girdle. Um, <laughs> The only two companies that really make steel rule dies were Spellbinders and Sizzix. So Spellbinders also got into the steel rule die business, and maybe you have a Spellbinders steel rule die. Now you'll see, from here, they look the same. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a Tim Holtz die and a spellbinder die and a Sizzix die. They all, from this angle, they all look the same. From this angle, they look the same. The only difference is who manufactured them. They're manufactured exactly the same way, so you can use it exactly the same way. Should we push our luck a little bit? Shall we, shall we push our luck just a little bit? Um, let's take uh, yellow. At some point I will have added too much paper and it will say no. 
and knowing me, I would say, really? And I would try again and it would say, I told you no. <laughs> so let's see if I can cut through this many sheets at one time. The die may be able to take it, my scissors might not. <laughs> Okay, so, and I don't need that big, so let's just trim it on down. So now I'm really pushing my luck. I've added three more, three more sheets of paper, I think, two more sheets of paper. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now everybody at Ellison is either going, don't do it, Stacy, don't do it, don't do it. Or they're like, yeah, go ahead. You're fine. <laughs> I'm going to put my die, my paper, my cut plate, bring my machine on over, and I'm going to send it through. Let's see. Ah, see? It ain't taking it. It's saying, uh-uh, no way. <laughs> All right, let's back off a sheet. You're like, how can one sheet make a difference? Well, it can. Oh! Let's see if it cut all the way through. Oh, the last one, not so, yeah, see? Close, but no cigar. Oh, that one's so close. I'm just, uh, so I'm gonna say you need to keep it, well, this is 80 pound paper to let you know. You probably need to keep it to, what did I start with, five or something like that? <laughs> So I've got one, two, three, four. I thought I had a pink one. Oh, the pink one didn't get cut. Yeah, you probably need to keep it to about five sheets. But look at how pretty. It took it through, but there just wasn't enough pressure. And the blade wasn't long enough to get through my last two cuts. It took it, it just couldn't cut it. If the blade was a little bit longer, and look at I have all of these beautiful stencils now. I have all of these to use as stencils. If the blade was longer, it might have gone through, but I think still five sheets of paper is not so bad. But what else can this cut? Well, let's see. Um... How about something like, how about that film, that plastic that I was using? Thick, I mean thick plastic, really thick. Will I be able to cut that here? I don't know, let's try. I'm just going to cut enough to fit over my die. I've got my do not cut plate, my cut plate, my machine. And again, I don't know if you can see that all the little paper is kind of getting over the top of it, but you just wipe it down afterwards or by the white one. Opens up in the back.
Ooh, I bet that would look pretty on black paper. Get the rest of the cuts out. Ooh, that's not paper, that's plastic. It's a heavy, thick plastic. No problem. Easy peasy. But what else can it cut? Well, what if we played with something thicker? What if we played with something like this? Very textural. Um, kind of felt back, kind of a faux leather. Thick, super thick. Let's see what we get. Let's cut a piece out. And you can see how thick it is. Let's put it on. So I always put the side that I want to see on my project face down against the die. Even if I run the die this way, I want it, I want it, the, the fabric or the paper that I want to see on my project should be facing the cut. If I do it this way, it will still cut fine, but when you're die cutting, it tends to round the corners a little bit and make the die look a little more finished. So you want that look when you're finished on, on your project. If you cut it this way, it's not the end of the world. It just will, the edges won't kind of bevel a little bit. And here, I don't know if you can, if I, can you see the metal in there? Those are the blades that are cutting. Can you see the metal in there? So let's put this here and let's try. Done. Steel rule dies have an advantage because they're able to cut thicker types of materials. The disadvantage is that the shapes tend to be more simple. Let's see. Um, ooh, this is sure pretty. Ooh, right? Let's try that. Again, backed. And all of this stuff came from our local, probably our local, maybe Walmart. So did you know that you could do this with your dies? Did you know you could do this inside a big shot machine or a vagabond machine or a big kick machine? Instead of it self-feeding, it's going, you're gonna crank it through like you normally do, but it's still going to cut. Through, let go. And this is a Spellbinders die through a Sizzix Big Shot switch machine. And they are happy to have you use other people's dies with their machine. What you cannot use is other people's tools, their cutting plates, their platforms, anything that is specialized to their machine. Isn't that cool? So steel rule dies allow you to do thicker projects, thicker materials, thicker textiles, or more sheets of paper at once. You're just going to have a little simpler type of design. All right, moving on. So, so far we have done steel rule dies, sizzlets, and embosslets. Let's move along. 
think I'm going to bring out, you know what, I'm going to do those first and then I'll move to that one. All right, so steel rule dies come in a host of different sizes. This happens to be an XL die. I don't know what they, uh, scoreboards XL. So it is a steel rule die. It's as thick as can be. And it cuts all the little shapes out of it for you to make that darling little shadow box. Super cute, right? It's from Eileen Hall. Hello, Eileen. How are you? I saw her on a Zoom the other day. Um, so super cute. And this die gives you all of the pieces. Do I know if this die is still available? Heavens no. I don't know how long I've owned this die. But we're going to use it. This die is no different than this die here or this die here. The only difference is the size. That's it. The size. That's it. So how are you going to cut these? Well, let me show you. Um, it's a little long for the plates that it comes with. A little bit long for the standard plates that come with your switch machine, or I believe they're the same size as the plus machine. You might be able to finagle it, but it's a little long. These dies get cut with this plate. Do you remember this plate? I used this plate when I did this die. Look at how much extra space you have on both sides. Look at that. It's like, it's like a match made in heaven. Like it was made just for dies this size and that's because it was. <laughs> so I don't even know if I have paper that long. <laughs> I can take a piece of paper. <laughs> I don't even know that I've got paper that size. Well, I can just put the whole thing through. My paper is not as long, so I suppose I could, well, just go with it. And let's grab another sh sheet. So my paper is not long enough to do the whole die. So I'm going to do part of the die and then I'm going to do part of the die. Use two pieces of paper to do it. I think if I cut that, it would leave, nope, it wouldn't leave me enough. So there. Now my whole die is covered. Let's get our platform, which would be just the cutting plates. I'm going to put my die right on top of this. I'm going to put my paper right on top of this. And then my other cutting plate. Let me just make sure everything lines up. Looks good. Looks good to you. Looks good to me. Bring my switch machine on over. And make sure I'm all lined up. Looks good. Let's send it through. What's the worst that can happen? It's paper. Okay, it's feeding through. Creaks and cracks are okay. I know it sounds bad, but it's fine. As long as it's feeding, you're good. And I have started to cut all the little pieces from my box. Now, it probably takes three or four pieces to make the box, or three or four cuts, and, oh, that's a good point. Three or four cuts to make the box, so you may have to, oh, well, look, you may have to put three pieces of paper down to actually be able to have enough pieces to make the box. But I just wanted to show you the size of the die and that it can be done inside the switch. But you will need to have 
which if you have these dies already, chances are you have these plates already too. So you can just send it on through. If I wanted to cut something thick, can I do this? Yes. This die is a, is a die that has an, a little embellishment to it. It um, is a movers and shapers die, and I'm gonna get to movers and shapers next. That means this little piece fits right in there and when it's in there, it's going to help cut an oval. And when it's out, it's just going to cut the shape here. Now, it didn't come with that little piece to make sure everything pops out. But let's just cut that little, let's just cut this so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is a, this is a movers and shapers feature as part of the Sizzix die. Tim Holtz has oodles of movers and shapers. I don't know if they still make them anymore, if they've been discontinued, but chances are, if you're a die cut fan and you're a Tim fan, you own some of them. Now, I'm just gonna leave it right on my platform and I don't need to have it all the way to the end because all I'm gonna try and do is cut that piece right there. So I've just scooched it down just a little bit so it feeds a little bit nicer. It doesn't matter to me that the die is off the back end because I'm not cutting anything back there. All I care about is up here. Bring my machine forward and send it through. Little creaks and cracks, it's okay as long as the machine is feeding forward. Okay. So now I've cut it with a little hole in it. Originally, it looked like this, but now I've used the movers and shapers feature right here to cut that oval. And that movers and shapers is held in by a magnet. so that it does not fall out. That way you can center it, line it up, and it's magnetized and it stays there. The movers and shapers features can also be used all on their own. Now, I could take a piece of paper. What if I just wanted that oval? That's all I wanted is that oval. Well, this is what's going to make it. But I want you to notice something. Do you see how thick this die is? And you saw how thick this die was, my little elephant. And you saw how thick my Spellbinders die was. They're all right there about the same. What I want you to notice is that my little movers and shapers isn't anywhere near the thickness that I need. It's just not thick enough. Let's take these two and put these over here for now. And let's grab my smaller cutting platform, my plates. And you bought one of these dies not knowing what it does. This is what it looks like on the back. You can see where the magnets are and you're like, I can't use it. It doesn't cut anything. I've tried it with my Big Shot machine. I've tried it with my Vagabond. I've tried it. It just won't cut. Well, that's because it's not tall enough to reach the rollers no matter what machine you use. So if I were to take a piece of paper and put that paper over the top, I'm doing just what I would do and I'm regardless, in fact, I think I'm gonna rotate this so I can maybe take a little of the warp out, bring it over. Doesn't matter what machine I'm gonna use, I'm gonna send it on through it's going to feed. But it does nothing. It doesn't have the height to hit the roller inside the machine to push the pressure into the blade. Does not happen. You've got to have something to get that height up, which is why if you wanted to use just that oval, you need to put it back in this die. Put your paper 
just over the oval. That's all you're going to care about. In fact, I'll cut my paper down even a little bit. And I'll use these plates because I don't want to grab my big plates. I just want that oval. That's all I care about is that little oval. It's the perfect frame for the perfect picture on my perfect layout, and it's just the finishing touch. Okay, let's see what happens. I should square up. I'm the worst at squaring up. Now I've cut my oval. Well, I cut this too, but it's not a full piece. All I cared about was that oval. Okay, perfect. I've got my oval now. And you're like, okay, but I bought this. I bought some of Tim's dies that look like this, but I don't have any dies that look like this with this extra little piece that pops out and it's magnet. Okay, I hear you. And I don't know if they still make them or not, it's this called the Sizzix Shuttle. And what this is, it's a big old magnet. And when you put this piece, when you put these two pieces together, magically, they became the same as having a steel rule die. This shuttle has the extra height that you need to make this die work. So if you've got dies that look like this on the back, and you can't get them to work. You either need a die that has a movers and shapers feature, like the one I just showed you, or you need a shuttle. And that's going to get that height just right so that you are able to send it through. Oh, wait, 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 I've got paper here. Yay for me. All right, let's take a piece of this. All I want is the oval. I've got it on my shuttle. I'm gonna place my shuttle on my do not cut pad, which is just another cutting plate that I try not to cut into. Square it on up and let's see what happens. Ooh. Okay, so it didn't take it, but it didn't not take it. Right? It didn't it didn't say yes, but it didn't say no. And what's this button? Well, you saw me push it and that backs it up. Yeah, see it it's not taking it. So maybe I've got to remove one clear plate. Maybe it's too tall. Did you see the back button though? It's very nice, very handy to have a back button. I use a back button on my computer all the time. Oh, that sounds promising. It does, it does, it sounds promising. Yay, look at us go. <laughs> Look at us go. So when I tried, and you saw me, I tried. When I tried to use my shuttle and sandwich it between two clear plates, it didn't say yes and it didn't say no. It didn't automatically send it back my way and say, uh-uh. It just kind of sat there. And that's when you push your little back button. I love the little back button. That makes my heart so happy. I could do the back button all day long. Put it in. It doesn't take it, but it's not sending it back on its own. Um, hello. <laughs> However, if I want to make it work, get rid of that bottom plate and just use my shuttle.
Ta-da! Do you have dies that look like this? You might. Shuttle is what you need, unless you have, but wait, there's more. Maybe you have this Tim Holtz die or a Tim Holtz die that has a movers and shapers feature in it. Maybe you bought one and you're like, I don't understand what that metal piece is for. So here's his, I have, and it says movers and shapers on it. I have no idea. I'm guessing that this is no longer available. First things first, do not throw this piece away if you have this die or any movers and shapers die. In fact, I'm a little surprised that this die didn't come with that piece. Just saying, but you know, the die is so old I can't complain. So what is this little piece? Well, simple. It's magnetically held in and it's a little piece of foam that when you put your paper in there, it helps the paper pop out. With nothing in there and you die cut your paper, it tends to get stuck around the edges and then you're having to pry your paper up. <laughs> Let's see if I can make that happen. Let's see, I'm gonna put these off to the side over there. Oh, I got a mess going on here. Holy smokes, artichokes. That's when I really need the Sizzix elves to come in and clean up my mess after me. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to do that. <laughs> like I said, I'm not on staff. <laughs> so I'm just going to put my paper right over that hole and I'm not going to put this little piece in. Right over the hole and it's thick. So I don't need anything else but my two cut plates. That's all I need are a do not cut plate. You try not to cut into it. You obviously can see that I have, but it stays nice and flat and it's not warping where this one is getting a little warped. That's okay. I'm going to use that plate until it cracks in half. And let's bring my machine over. So we're not making anything today, but I'm hoping that you are learning something or remembering something like, oh yeah, I do own those dies, or oh yeah, I do like them for that reason, or oh yeah, I let's send it on through. Go, go, go. It's okay, don't freak, it's okay. It's coming out the back end. Oh, this one came out pretty good. That came out pretty good. What can happen is that it can get wedged, kind of like that. And then you're trying to get it out without damaging the paper, without bending it or tweaking it. So you're trying to pull it out. What that little piece does is it makes sure that this piece pops right out because that little piece of foam is taller just a little taller than the foam that's on the die. So it's going to compress down enough to let you die cut, but then it's going to pop back up into shape and it's going to push that, that die out. Let's do it. Okay. So, let's kind of square up. I'm notorious for not squaring my plates up. Square up. Send it on through. It's okay. I know it sounds horrible, but because that foam is a little taller, it kind of pops this right on out. There's no way for it to get stuck down. There's just no way. So if you've got one of these, you always want to use it with your movers and shapers, always. It's what allows the paper to not get wedged in there. But then, what if you have a movers and shapers, some of these, see, these are gonna have the same type of backing 
And you can always tell a movers and shapers die. It's always got a backing that looks like this, which is what this backing looks like. So now you have options. If you want to cut these cute little these cute little presents out because you have this die, you have a couple different options. I could put the little present right in there. Grab some paper. Is that big enough? I don't care about the shield. I don't care about the arch at all. All I want is this piece out. That's all I care about. I can put my paper right over the top of it and all it's going to do is cut that paper out. Some of you have these dies and don't know how, why you bought them or how you got them, but you've got them and now you don't know how to use them. Find, if you can, on eBay or someplace that has an inexpensive movers and shapers die, a, what I call a, a host die. So this die, even though I don't want that arch shape, it's hosting the little shape that I do want. Because then all of a sudden these dies become useful again. Actually, I'm going to put it in this way. So my plates are a little warped. I'm going to show you that no problem. Send it through. And now I've cut my cute little present out. So all you need is a host die, a host die. My opinion, if you have movers and shapers, you can buy a shuttle. And the shuttle's going to do the same thing as what I just did here. You have an option. I could have cut this little piece by putting it through my shuttle and sending it through or by putting it into a host die and sending it through. My feeling on the matter is that this is only ever going to allow you to do that piece. If you can find a movers and shapers die that you like, well then you can cut the shield or the arch all the time as much as you want, or you can make the little box as much as you want, but then you can also use it to cut your little ones too. It's like a twofer. This, this is not a twofer. <laughs> this is only gonna let you cut these little pieces. By using a host die, you use the die when you wanna use the die, and you use the movers and shapers feature when you wanna use the movers, oh, that one's a little big, when you wanna use the movers and shapers feature. Up to you. I will tell you the best host die is Tim's tag. He has a Tim Steel Rule die and it was a tag and it was it was good sized <laughs> not as big as this the die but not as small as this it was a it, but it gave you such room oh my gosh it was amazing and i used that as my host die forever because well it gave me a tag and it let me die cut my movers and shapers pieces anytime i wanted to me that's a win win if you have the shuttle use the shuttle. There's nothing wrong with the shuttle, but I'm a girl who likes to get <clears throat> as much as I can for my money, my bang for my buck. Holy smokes, artichokes. Okay, moving on. We did movers and shapers. Wahoo, could you? I think the last steel rule die I'm going to do is here. And this is this is the mammoth of the mammoth. This is a plus die. I think this is a, yep, that's a Biggs Plus. It is a popcorn box, super cute. It is a steel rule die. And this is what it makes. Do I sell this die? I did at one point in my life. I probably don't anymore. I don't even know if it's manufactured. You would have to check with Sizzix.com. So in one die, in one cut, 
you can make your popcorn box stinking cute. But of course, there's absolutely no way, no way this would ever go through a Vagabond or a uh, Sizzix Big Shot machine or a Big Kick machine. It is too wide. Remember, we've been working with dies that are only six inches wide. This die is substantially bigger than that. It's like eight inches wide here. I mean, we've been working with dies that are teeny tiny small. Well, they're not small, but they're certainly not this big. And before there wasn't, Ellison didn't have an electronic machine necessarily that would take it. They had a six inch electronic machine that would, you could push the button and hold the button and it would go through the express machine, I think it is but never one that you just feed it through and let it go. And again, I don't even know if I've got a piece of paper that's big enough. So let's just grab a sheet of what I've got. Well, it's big enough to cut most of it, that's for sure. The little popcorns are cute. Okay. Now for this, I absolutely have to go back to the plates that came with my switch machine. I have to, they're the only plates big enough because I need this die to have pressure from here all the way across. If I tried to use this little die or this little plate here, it would cut what's here in the middle, yes, but it wouldn't cut anything that's around it because there's not, it doesn't have the right height and there's no pressure being added. This is too short. It's not gonna hit the roller. It needs that top plate on it for it to hit the roller to get the pressure to cut. So again, if I sent this through, I've got my bottom plate. Actually, I don't even need my bottom plate. Yes, I do. I need my bottom plate. Think about this, Stacy. I need my you sandwich. Okay, so I have my bottom plate. I have my plus die. I have my paper, and then I have my little normal everyday standard cutting plate. And let's send it on through. And it's feeding, and it's feeding, and it's feeding, and it says, "Okay, done." Great, thanks. Now I only had the plate covering that much and it only cut where the plate was. It didn't cut anything else. There's just not enough pressure. You need to use the right tools for the right job. Now, if I wanted, there's these little popcorns right here. And maybe that's all I wanted, was those little popcorns right there. Could I get away with using this plate? Yes, because all I want are those little popcorns right there. Easy peasy. Zoop. Zoop. Because most often, actually I'm gonna to toss that, most often, you get extra elements on your die. It's not just the main die. This has got little words on it and all a little label to put on the front. It's got all sorts of stuff. So if I wanted just that little, those little popcorns, and maybe I would layer five sheets of paper at one time because it's a steel rule die and I wanna cut all my yellow popcorn at once. I don't wanna do it 15, you know, five times. I wanna get it done as quickly as I can. Bring my machine back over. <sighs> nope. Still gonna have those little bits and pieces in it. And send it on through. Come on, line up. There we go. Oh, are you gonna say that? Oh, no, square it up. Don't care about the rest of it. I'm not trying to cut the rest of it. we go. All I wanted were my little popcorns. And look at that. 
I've got my little popcorns. Aren't they cute? <laughs> but I want to cut, aren't they cute? I'm going to put those there. I want to cut my whole die out. Oh, and look and see, I got some of the words out because the paper was covering it. I want to cut my whole die out. So I need to go back and use the plates that came with my machine. I need to use the big plates. I don't need to use any of the platforms because my die is steel rule. It's thick and that's S-T-E-E-L rule. R-U-L-E. And I bring it over and hands free. It's going to come out the sticking on my mat. There we go. And now I got the whole thing cut. go in there and start making my box and it made look at how cute is that to go on the front you could do that in a different color and all the little words and the little labels all of it possible with your switch machine or a big shot plus machine not gonna work with a standard big shot machine a vagabond machine it's just not wide enough you've got to use the right machine for the die you are working with. And while the smaller six inch machines will take 90% of the dies on the market, absolutely, you may have a few dies that it won't take. And at that point, you have to decide what's more important. Do you really love the die and you miss not being able to do it? Then you have to buy a bigger machine. Or, well, you give your friend who's got the bigger machine the die or you all go in on a bigger machine and you share it. I mean, <laughs> you kind of have to decide what's going to work best for you. So a steel rule die is a steel rule die is a steel rule die. doesn't matter how big or small it is. The only thing that's going to change is whether it has a movers and shapers option. Other than that, you're going to treat them all the same. You're going to use them all the same. And remember, the shapes are going to be a little simpler because somebody had to take the blade and wrap it around and get it perfect. They can't do that with an intricate die. Can you take, well, I already showed you, you could take these and use them. The steel rule dies we cut. We cut paper. We cut plastic. We cut fabric or faux leather. We cut, I mean, just a host of different materials. And it doesn't matter who makes the steel rule die. It's all going to work. All right, moving on. Let me get these out of my way. I think I'm going to jump to embossing folders. And then I think I'm going to finish with chemically etched dies because chemically etched dies are the most prevalent die on the market today. Everybody makes them. I make them, Sizzix makes them, Spellbinders makes them, Memory Box makes them, Lawn Fawn makes them, Creative Expressions makes them. Um, gosh, who do, I mean, you name the manufacturer, they probably have done a steel rule die or a, a chemically etched die in their day. So before I do those, I'm gonna move over to embossing folders. And let me bring them out. And I'm not just going to use Sizzix embossing folders. Okay, so. Hello again, sorry, me again, I know. If Sizzix makes a product, Sizzix product is going to work with Sizzix product. The only reason it won't work 
is if it's not if your machine is not wide enough to physically take the product. So if you've got a big shot, a big kick, a vagabond, an express, a plus, um, they're all going to take the dies, but the plus or the switch will allow you to take the bigger dies. Now their little handle, little purse, only does embossing folders. That's all it does. And their little sidekick, again, only does chemically etched or wafer dies that are about two and two and a half inches wide. It's a very small little machine and you can use it for words and things like that. It's very convenient, but it's limited by not only the size of the die, but its opening is not big enough to put a steel rule die through. No, no, no. So your, your typical Sizzix machines, your big shots, your big kicks, it doesn't matter if it's a, a vintage big shot or a fabby big shot, a pro. Those, all these things are gonna go through your pro. So Sizzix tries to make their most useful machines being able to use as many of the dies as they manufacture. And most often the reason you can't is because the width of the machine will not, you've got a machine that's six inches and it needs an eight inch machine. So this is about showing other people's product with their machine. I mean, gosh, we're not, we're, we're loyal, sure, but we also want what we want. And if somebody comes out with a really good die or a really good embossing folder, I've never met anybody who said, I'm not gonna buy that because I only buy stamping up. No, if you love it and you want it, you're gonna buy it and you wanna be sure it's going to work in the machine that you have. And Sizzix machines, they're considered really the workhorse in the industry. Platinums are also very, very popular and work very, very hard and, and are a great machine because they allow you to do so much with them. So you got a Spellbinders Platinum machine. The Platinum is also eight inches wide. It lets everything go through, but it doesn't push a button and send it through. I don't know if they're making one either. I don't know. All right, embossing folders. Let's talk embossing folders and let's go down. So I wanted to play with other people's products so you could see. Now, Spellbinders has and I've done these, I did these in a YouTube. We have a world, we had a worldwide launch on them. I think we still might have a worldwide launch on two of them. These are larger than normal. These are, I believe five and a half by, or five, yeah, five and a half by eight and a half. So it's about the half the size of an A4 sheet of paper and much bigger than a typical standard embossing folder. That's an A2 size, look at the difference. This is a 2D embossing folder, which means that you're gonna get a beautiful embossing, but it's not that deep, deep embossing of a 3D folder. Now, will these work in the machine? Absolutely, they will. I will tell you that it is really, really close to the size of your standard cutting plates. I mean, it's right there. Let's go ahead and let's sound it, uh, send it on through. And I'm just gonna use some white paper. So you always know you're doing an uh, embossing folder correctly if you can read who manufactures it or the name or the SKU. That's what you want facing up because that's the side that you're gonna wanna see on your card or your layout or your altered art, your mini album, your junk journal, whatever you're doing. You wanna see that paper. So if this had a design on it, if this was pattern paper that I was trying to emboss, I would want that pattern facing out. You wanna see what you wanna see on your project. I'm gonna put my plate on it. And now this is obviously, it's not big enough, it's not tall enough, it's, the sandwich is not thick enough. I mean, it would just roll, it would go through, it would do nothing. I need to get it higher. And so I'm going to bring back my base platform that goes with my switch machine. Do I need my A plate? Oh wait, do not use for embossing. Warning, warning, Will Rogers, warning. No, they are telling you, do not use it for your embossing 
So I'm going to use just my base plate. Now again, this is very, very close. So I'm going to center everything up and I'm going to send it on through. Oh, maybe, maybe not. What's the problem? Hmm. I have a feeling the problem is that my plates are almost the exact same size as the embossing folder. That's my guess, is that when it's hitting the roller, there's not enough plate for it to grab before it hits the embossing folder. I could be wrong, but let's see. Let's grab the plates that come with my machine. Now, because it's embossing, it doesn't matter which plate goes down and which plate goes up because you're not cutting into it. Let's see if I do this. If I'm any more, if, if my success is any better. Oh! Well, it didn't like that at all. What did I do? Nope, it's saying no can do, thank you very much. Hmm, all right, let's take a plate off. See, I don't think that's enough. No, see, not enough pressure. So something I'm doing wrong, we're gonna figure it out until I get it right. Hmm. Okay, let's try again. I'm gonna go back to what I originally had. No, it just does not wanna take it. It says, no, thank you. All right, let's try another folder and see what happens. Hmm, this one I am gonna try with my smaller plates. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna try a smaller folder. I'm not giving up on that one because I know it'll go through. I just know it. And let's see. See, I like that one. No problem. Oh my gosh, is that beautiful. This is a Nelly's embossing folder and it is three dimensional. Holy smokes. I don't know if I can get on camera the depth of this. I mean, that is simply amazing and that's not misting my paper. All right, but I'm not giving up. I am not giving up. I'm going to, maybe if I run it this way. Where there is a will, there is definitely going to be a way. Let's put my paper in. Let's, I still think it's going to take two. So I'm still going to use two. I wonder if I'm, run it this way if that would be better because it's so much bigger I still believe
and let's square it up because I'm the worst at squaring my my plates up. That's why I like using the smaller ones because I know that they're squared. <laughs> See, let's square it up. Nope, it is not wanting to take it. And one is not going to be enough. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's my machine. What's the worst that can happen? My A plate. No cutting pad down. Oh, that feels good. That felt pretty good. Oh, that's the ticket. Remember, here, let me just ink it. Remember when I told you everybody's folders are a little bit different? So I told you, everybody's embossing folders are a little bit different. Everybody's dies are a little bit different. So I kept trying it and I, it told me, but I didn't listen. It did tell me that nope, nope, it doesn't want it that way. But again, I didn't want to listen. So I wanted to do it the way I would with a Sizzix embossing folder. But this is a Spellbinders embossing folder. And gosh, I really did, I tried. And it kept kicking it back at me and saying, nope, and I turned it and I rotated it. And let's try it one more time just to be, just because I'm a girl who wants to just be absolutely sure. Let's see. Ha! Huh. Well, look at that. Go figure. Told you they're not edited. You get what you get and you see what you see. This time I did it the same way I was doing it and look it. There it is. Okay, well, can lightning strike twice? Let's try again. I'm, we're gonna try until, so that's the way, it, it's a 2D embossing folder. Yep, put it there. I've got my base plate. I've got my cutting pad. I've got my embossing folder, just like they're showing me. And now it says no. Well, could you make up your mind? Am I off? Now I'm square. See? You just have to try. So I'm gonna go back to what I was doing. And I was taking off the bottom platform putting my embossing folder straight onto my, or putting on my A plate. So I've got my base, my A plate, no cut plate, and then a clear cut plate over the top. And that seemed to just sell through without any issues, thoughts, or problems. See, look at that. It's just about getting the embossing folder to the right height. And bam, 
It's beautiful. But I didn't have to do that with my 3D folder by Nellie's. Everybody's is a little different. What if I were to ink this up? What if I were to grab another piece of white paper and I wanted to ink this up? Let's use a little bit of pink. Always start with my lightest color. So I guess pink's gonna be my lightest color. And look at see, I always ink up both sides. I do all over in one color, my main color. And then I'm gonna come back and maybe I hit it with a little bit of teal. I don't know, sure, why not? And let's hit it with a little bit of teal. And then just for crazy contrast, let's use some charcoal. And then let's see what we get. Now, should we try again and see if it goes through? Ooh, one piece of paper. See if it goes through like it's supposed to. So this is the way the platform says to do it. And it went through once. And look at there. So it just goes to show you, you got to try what might work one time. You might have to alter the next. I can't tell you why it's doing that. I have no idea. And this is where my video is not being edited. Really? <laughs> Ooh. So I've got this one on this side. And I've got that one on that side. And now all you have to do is decide which one you like more. Because nobody's going to know what you tape down. Gosh, I really want to know why that's happening. I just really do. <laughs> it must be me, obviously, because it's not the machine. But isn't it nice to know that it will work both ways? You can't use this. If I put this down and I had both cutting platforms, that would probably be a no-no, which is why it says do not emboss. But, hey, all we can do is see what happens. See, I'm the worst at lining it up. Oh, see, it won't even, it won't even, I can't even fit it in there. No can do. Let's ditch the A plate. Let's try it with the two clear plates and see if it works this time. And if not, I'm going to go back to just using the A plate and one cut pad. Nope. There's something in there that says, nope. What if I turn it on an angle? So it's not taking the straight line in. Is that it? Do you think that's it? Because when you have a parallel line hitting the roller, it may be going, uh-uh, I don't think so, too thick. But when you put it on an angle, I put dies on an angle all the time. When you're using a, a crank machine or a manual machine, it stops it from going ka -funk. Oh, okay, we're gonna try one more time. Another piece of white paper. Good thing I got lots of white paper. And I'm gonna ink it up and I'm gonna send it through on an angle. But isn't it nice to know you have options? If it doesn't work one way, you're gonna try it another? Let's see, what colors? Um, let's use some lemon. And I'm just gonna ink up the whole thing. 
both sides. And this is Hero Arts. These are their cube inks that we have the exclusive on. We sell them individually as opposed to in the pack. And our next four colors come out in the next couple weeks. I'm very excited about that. And then maybe we use a little bit of pale tomato in there. So always start with your lightest color. And then let's throw some pale tomato, some pale tomato, and then I don't know about the charcoal on here, but we're going to do it anyway because it's only white paper, but I'm not going to do it on that side. All right, let's put our paper in. I'm going to put it on, I've got my base platform, I've got my first cut plate, I've got my spellbinders embossing folder, I'm going to tweak it so that when it feeds into the machine, it starts up here and it feeds down. Not like this, because it's hitting the, it's hitting the roller. It's parallel to the roller and it's having trouble. It's going, oh, it's too thick. But if I tweak it, I have to do that with dies all the time when I'm die cutting. Let's see what happens. I'm pretty sure this is where Ellison goes, Gosh, I wish that would have worked the first time, but isn't it good that it didn't work the first time or the second time we were able to find a fix? And that's it. That's the solution. Slightly twisting the embossing folder. Done. Well, who knew? Well, you do now, and so do I. <laughs> We did it before, but we do now. I minked. Ooh. <laughs> so what colors you use certainly make a difference. I don't know which side you like more. You have options. This is so big you can cut it in half and make one card using this side and make another card using that side. Okay, well, happy day. We got the Spellbinders one through because it's a 2D. And then we also did the 3D, but let's do the 3D on uh, some pretty paper just so you can see. Let's do a 3D. And this 3D is by Nelly's Choice. They are an international company. I do know I, we have this embossing folder. We have the Spellbinders embossing folder. We have this one. They will not be on a YouTube Yummies. So let's put it in. And maybe we twist this one just a little bit too, just for good measure. Just so it's not hitting the roller in a parallel manner. Ooh let's bring this guy on over. And because I'm using embossing folders, they're not cutting into the plates, so it doesn't really matter which plates I use. I could use the small ones if that's easier for you because this is a much smaller embossing folder. It's all good. I want to, well, maybe I just tweak the whole thing <laughs> because I can. I've got that much space. And let's send it on through. Hands free. Done. Well, so far I'd say that was our only hiccup. And look at the depth of that embossing and I didn't miss the paper. That's crazy beautiful. I mean, that's really beautiful.
the depth is what you need to be seeing and hopefully my camera gets it I don't know that's a 3d embossing folder by Nellie's they also make six by six embossing folders can you use a six by six embossing folder of course you can by six. I don't even have to trim off the side if I don't want to because my platform is big enough. Put it right on and instead of me sending it through, I think that's the teachable moment here, instead of me sending it through to where the embossing folder is all lined up straight here, straight here, straight there, I think I'm just going to tweak it a little bit so it feeds into the machine a little differently. I think that is absolutely the teachable moment here, without question. Let's get it all lined up. I'm gonna send it on through. Gonna come out the back end. And done. Let's see what we've got. Oh my gosh. I mean, that is, that's amazing without misting the paper or anything. That is just stunning. Wow. And this is on 80 pound cardstock. So I'm going to ink half of it just so you can see. Half inked, half not. Are you looking for just a textural element to your card or your project? Then don't ink it. If you're just looking for that, that texture and that depth and some depth perception to your project, if you want the actual design, ink it. And the teachable moment, just twist your embossing folders just a little bit so that straight edge, the problem that's happening is that the, the straight edge here is hitting the straight edge of the roller. The par it's parallel, and it's having trouble grabbing it to send it on through. But if you just twist just a little bit, the roller's going to grab from up here and then feed down. Good teachable moment. Yay for us. Now, the only other embossing folder I want to show you is a cut and emboss. A cut and emboss. Yes, this is an embossing folder that has, and this one's by Studio Light. This is an embossing folder that has a die also in it. So it's got embossing all the way around and then a die cut in the center. Say what? Yep, let's cut it. Hmm, what color do we want to use? How about maybe a purple? Use, it's kind of a plummy purple, but that's okay. I think these are about the color of the new SMS sweatshirts this year. It's kind of a plummy purple. <laughs> With little flamingos on the back that say we're flamazing. <laughs> I know, hokey, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, so if this was pattern paper, I'd want the pattern facing me where you can see the die. So if I had pattern paper and the pattern was here, let's say... Let's say I had this paper that I wanted to cut and I wanted to put that die cut in there. Well, really, this is the front. So the die is going, well, it's gonna cut both all the way through. This would be the front side because this would have the finished look of the die, that kind of bevel that I've talked about. So you wanna turn your paper with the die facing you, you wanna see the paper that works for you. So, 
that would be too much. I'm not even going to do it, but with all the pattern on it, that would be too much. So let's send it on through. And again, I'm going to sandwich it. And I've learned my lesson. I'm going to tweak it just a bit so that the die, the embossing folder, feeds from the top here and feeds down, as opposed to it trying to grab the roller, trying to grab it at a parallel. And because my surface area is so big, I can just turn my whole cutting plates. Handle. <laughs> Handle would be nice. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Oh, nope, I missed it. All right, we'll do it again. It fed through fine but my embossing folder twisted a little bit, which made no difference at all. <laughs> I still got the cut and I still got the embossing. <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? So it cut the center and it embossed all the way around the edges. Pretty. Let's try again. Let's see if I can keep it from rotating. Come on, out you go. So I've got purple paper in there and I'm just going to leave it there for now. Let's just see if I can get my plates down so that my paper, my die does not my embossing folder does not rotate. So I don't want it straight. I'm going to put it at a slight angle so it feeds better. Only this time I'm going to hold it in place better until I know it's fed all the way in. Better. Better. And it's done. All my little bits and pieces come out. I'm embossed. Let's see if I can ink a little bit so you can see the embossing. I've got a mess, all the little bits and pieces, all the fallouts. The little bits and pieces that fall out of a die, that's actually what they're called. Fallouts, <laughs> really technical. <laughs> so let me try and ink this just a little bit just to show you the embossing. Okay. Not the best inking job, but I want you to be able to see the embossing. So our lesson with embossing folders is one, if necessary, you can remove one clear plate and use the A platform. It won't work if you try to use two clear plates or two cutting plates in the A platform. And two, you need to tweak it so that it's not feeding in straight. Just give it a little tweak and then it seems to go through absolutely a-okay, easy peasy. So embossing folders, done. We have done sizzlets, sizzlet strips, embosslets, embosslet extra large, steel rule dies. We've done the small steel rule, the medium steel rule, the long, the, the plus size, we've done movers and shapers. We've done movers and shapers with a shuttle. We've done movers and shapers using a host die. And now we've done embossing folders. Let's move to, hmm, let's move to, let's move to chemically etched dies. Okay, let's move to chemically etched dies. 
So I've got a couple different chemically etched dies. I've got Spellbinders for you. These two are part of the Say Yes to Spellbinder sale that's going on right now. I have got my dies. So I have three sets of simply defined kaleidoscope layering dies. All four dies, well, this is a background die, so you can use the background die all on its own, but they are meant to layer together to get a finished look. A lot of my dies can be mixed and matched, so you could use layer one and layer three, or layer two and layer three, or layer one and layer two, or layer one, two, and uh, four. It's really up to you. And then I try to fill in the space with as much stuff as I possibly can. So this die here, all four of them, are going to give you a host of different looks. I mean just a ton of different looks because you're going to be able to layer it. The, the combinations are quite extensive. <laughs> and again, I always put a background die in so that if you just need a background for something, you've got a beautiful die to do that. This one, all of those little leaves, I put in so many little leaves so you can cut tons of little leaves. makes the daisies and then all of the little leaves and the butterflies those are all extras for you all extras I think I'm going to start really simple and I think I'm going to use the spellbinders dies to do that um, so I'm gonna play with this one and I'm gonna play with this one and this one I think that's a good start. All right, so these are called chemically etched dyes. They're wafer dyes, and they're called wafer dyes because, well, they're pretty much wafer thin. They are dramatically different than what you know as a steel rule dye, what you've learned about a steel rule dye. Steel rule dye mm -hmm. has that metal blade built into it, and it allows you to cut lots and lots and lots of different um, textures and papers and textiles because it's got a blade. A chemically etched die doesn't have a blade. It's got a cut line all the way around and it doesn't hurt you. There's nothing that you can harm yourself with. These are great for kids because they can't get hurt by them, but it limits you sort of as to how many, how, what kind of things you can cut. Could I cut five sheets of paper with this like I did with my butterfly here? No, I couldn't. I can cut one sheet of paper, maybe two, because it doesn't have a blade. Let me show you how they work. And then let me show you how to get more out of them. So I think I'm going to start with that one. And we can use this and we can use this. So let's see, this is a pretty big butterfly. So I'm going to try and get two out. I'm going to try. I don't know that I'm going to succeed, but I'm going to try. And because this is a chemically etched dye, a wafer dye, you absolutely will need to use your A platform. That is what the A platform was built for. That's what you're supposed to use it with, an A platform. Now, their A platform tells you if you're using a thin lid or a frame lid, what you're supposed to do. Are you supposed to cut down into or are you supposed to cut up? And it says it shows you all of that on the platform. This is a Spellbinders die, but it would be considered a framelit because it is an open frame die. I can stick my hand right through it, no problem. It's an open frame die. And according to their platform here, it wants me to cut down. So I can bring over, I don't need to use my big plates. I can bring over my cut plate and line this up and put my do not cut plate on top and you're gonna say, but Stacy, it's parallel. You just told us not to go parallel. No, the die is not parallel. See, the die starts way up here 
and feeds back into. So I know that it's going to take it without any problem and I'm just going to use my smaller plates because I don't want to cut into my big plates. It costs more to replace them. So why not give you what Ellison did, what Sizzix did? They gave you the availability to use the plates you already own and save those bigger plates for when you need them. You're never going to cut onto your A plate, never, and you're never going to cut into your base plate. These two items you don't replace. They're going to stand tried and true with you during the the time you have the machine. Now, if you are off center when you send it through, um, <laughs> it should stop and send it and feed it back to you and say, try again. But I've been known with a manual machine to send it through off center and my, my little shims get a little messed up, but that's okay. I keep using them. So I'm gonna send this, I'm gonna line this on up and I'm gonna send this on through. We're gonna see if it takes two pieces of paper. We won't know until it's out. Is the suspense killing you? <laughs> Look at that. I got two butterflies out. I would not try three. I really wouldn't. I think your limit is the two. Let's grab the bigger butterfly. And let's see if I have enough paper here. Oh, can you say by the hair of a chinny chin chin? But that's all I need. And we've had this conversation before. If I actually have a hair on my chinny chin chin, I would expect somebody to be kind enough to don't post it, just email me. <laughs> okay, it wants me to cut down because I'm doing an open frame die, which Ellison Sizzix would call a framelit. I don't need to tweak it at all because I've already got a high point here and it's already going to feed down. Let's bring my machine over. Did I mention a handle? <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can get this in there because I'm awful tight on that paper. Oh, see, I was off. Wow. Oh, but I'm good now. So who's still with me? Me, 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 me. How many have left me? <laughs> Well, I, I really won't know if you've left. <laughs> and you don't need to call me to tell me or email me to let me know. This thing, I just have mangled that, but that's okay. All right, so now I was able to cut without any problem two of the bigger great stencils, both sizes, great stencils. And now I can nest them. Look at how cute! <laughs> Oh my gosh, and I could make darling things with these. The die comes with all these flowers and tons of stuff to do in there. But how cute is that? Just with a simple wafer die. But what more will these wafer dies do? Well, for that I'm going to use a slightly smaller one. I'm going to use the smaller butterfly and I can cut it out of paper, not a problem. Put it in. Oh, I moved it. Let's bring my machine over first. my platform up. I've got my base platform and my A shim. My A shim, I always need it for wafer dies. Put it in, cover it up. Let's 
send it through. Now you've got a lot of space. So would I necessarily cut, I mean, if I, if I was cutting a lot and doing a lot of things, I might put tons, I might even use the bigger plates and I could line up my dies all over the place. But here I just wanna show. So I've got my two little cute butterflies. Easy peasy, mac and cheesy. But what if I wanna do something more? What if I wanna cut something that's more uh, textural? What if I wanna cut a fabric? Can I cut a fabric? Well, we know I can cut a fabric with a steel rule die. That's not a problem. Can I do it with a little little wafer die from Spellbinders? I mean, there is no blade, right? Well, let's try. I think I want that piece. Okay, so I'm going to cut down, got my base plate, my A, my A shim, my cut plate, my fabric, my die, and my do not cut plate, or another clear plate. Bring my machine on over, center everything up, and send it on through. And let's see what happens. Hmm. Not so much. Mm -mm. Not so much. Let's try a piece of the plastic. Because wouldn't that be pretty out of a butterfly? <laughs> Now, if it didn't cut the paper, my guess is it's not going to cut the plastic. Or, I mean, if it didn't cut the fabric, I'm sorry. My guess is that it's not going to cut the plastic, but you never know until you try. Send it on through. Hmm. Eh. My guess is no. Oh yeah, it barely even left a mark. So what could I do if I wanted to get plastic and fabric to cut? What could I do? Well, I could use my precision base plate. Say what? Wait a minute, Stacy. They told me not to use a precision base plate with a plus machine because the pressure is so strong. And now you're saying you can use a precision base plate with a switch machine, even though it feels like it's so much stronger. Well, it is and isn't so much stronger. And again, this is me talking, not Ellison. And they may come back and say, oh, Stacy, you were so wrong about this. But my thought process is that Yes, it is, a, it is a, a little stronger machine, but more importantly than that, the pressure is more even. That's my guess. With, most, with, with everybody's die cutting machine, there's always a sweet spot, especially with a manual machine. There's always a sweet spot. Sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it's on the left side, the right side, which is why we often have to rotate our dies and send them back. I'm guessing that this machine has a much more even calibrated pressure could be wrong, but I have a feeling it is. And I have a feeling that that's one of the important things about this machine and why it allows you to do what you're able to do with it. All right, let's add a precision base plate into the mix. And if you have intricate dies, you need a precision base plate, whether you're using a manual machine or a switch machine. Should it cut with a switch machine? It really depends upon whose die it is and what you're trying to cut. Some intricate dies may go through here easy peasy and all the fallouts fall out without any problem not using a precision base plate. My dies, some of them, hmm, you get some of those dies out there by some manufacturers like me who are like, 
We like all the little cuts and the intricate and the detail that you get by using intricate dies. So let's see what happens when I add a precision base plate. Yes, you can add a precision base plate with a switch machine and you're going to be fine. The precision base plate takes the place of your bottom platform or your bottom cut plate. I'm not going to put my do not cut plate down, my precision base plate, my die, my paper, my do not cut plate and send it through. It won't fit. It's going to, well, we'll see. It's probably going to spit it back at me and say, I don't think so. Let's get it centered. Gosh, I don't even know if it'll take it. Yeah. It won't even take it. So I'm just going to use that reverse button. It'll take my bottom, but it won't take anything else. So let's get rid of this sheet, the, this platform right there. Let's just use our base platform, our A platform, our precision base plate, our die, our, or well, our paper, oh, this is plastic, so our plastic, our die, and then our do not cut plate, because it's a little flatter. And let's see if we send it on through what happens. Now, when I did it without the precision base plate, you saw that it barely even made a mark in the plastic because that is thick vinyl. Let's see. Oh, that sounds good. That's a good sound. If you hear that and it's still feeding through, it's a good sound. That means it's trying, it's wanting to do something. Right there, one little snip, one little snip. Zoop. Let's try it again. Let me use a piece that I didn't try to cut into. So let's use a fresh piece and let's put it down and we've got my base, my A, my precision base plate, and my do not cut. So just a just a cut plate that's a little more flat and not as warped. And let's see what happens. See, it sounds good, right? Okay, so, oh, yep, same in the same place. Hmm, no, oh, there it goes. Yep, just right there on that top little, top little guy right there. And this little guy right here. But for something that doesn't have a blade to cut through something so thick is pretty magical. What about, what about fabric? Let's go back and let's try the fabric again because I didn't get it the first time. Do you think I can get it the second time? I know I'm cutting out the center of my fabric, but that's the piece I want. <laughs> Let's try. So by adding a precision base plate to the mix, doesn't hurt the machine. It's not something that is, hey, you maybe not want to try this. They are saying, yes, you're going to be fine. Yes, it's meant to work with it. Yes, it is all compatible. Oh, look at that. 
That came out perfect. Holy smokes, artichokes. Okay, I started with this one without the precision base plate and it didn't cut all the way through. Look at that. Wow. Can we do it in a big scale? Can we do it in a big way? I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> Holy smokes. Is this big enough? Okay. What's the worst that can happen? This was a buck 49 fabric from Walmart. I know I'm not going to hurt the machine. The only thing that might happen is that it might not cut. And that's the, not the worst thing that's ever happened. So let's go through. Let me make sure I'm lined up. Oh, oh, keep my plates, keep my plates, keep my plates. Okay, good. I don't know, that's a pretty big die to try that with, right? Oh! Oh my gosh! One little, one little snip! Oh my gosh! That's with a Spellbinders wafer die. That is rock star. Because then you can take that. Maybe you have fabric. Maybe you have fabric that you've had for forever. Oh, I think I want it against this one. Oh no, I think I want it against this one. I could take that fabric and put that fabric on my paper and glue it down. Oh my gosh, I could make patches, I could make quilts, I could make, I, I mean, I could make cute little pillows, I could make a cute little purse sewing two of these together. Think of all the things you can do with that. All I had to do was add my precision base plate to the mix. And Sizzik says, you go, girl, you add that precision base plate. Absolutely. You give it a whirl and see if it's going to work. No tummy. <laughs> okay. Okay. What else do I have to try with? Hmm. Do you think it would cut? Well, let's try this. I think this might be too thick. Maybe too thick, but you know, no guts, no glory, right? No guts, no glory. Now you start looking at things in the craft store and the fabric department in a whole different way. All of a sudden, everything becomes possible. Things you didn't know you could do before can. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit because it's right to the edge of that. Okay, am I squared up? That was a rhetorical question. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 oh. Is it going to take it? I don't know. I give it 50 50. <gasps> and I'd be wrong. Oh, my gosh. Holy smokes, artichokes. Talk about all the amazing things you can now do with an open frame die. Okay, okay, let's think. I've got, let's try, let's try lace. Hmm, hmm. Not only is this lace, but it's lace with sequins in it. Can you see the sequins? It's lace with sequins in it. For this, I'm gonna put the sequins face down and not face up. I'm gonna bring my die back over and let's try. So I'm doing lace. It's beautiful lace. But it has sequins. I don't know. Now we're asking the die to cut through little sequins. Okay, squared up. 
See, it wants to push. There we go. I think it's because my plate is slightly bowed. Snip, I got I got one little snip right there. Zoop. And one little snip right there. Come on, little snip. Zzz. Don't want to snip my die. Zoop. And it went through the sequins. Oh! How pretty is this? Where's the pink one? Are these the same? Where's the bigger pink one? Oh. A precision base plate changes your world. It just does. Oh my gosh, and the sequins are still there. Do I have it backwards? Backwards? No. Yes, I have it backwards. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> Look at the sequins are still there. And it went right through it. So if it does the big one, that means the small one. Oh, I wonder if it would do the body. Okay, let's cut a little bit of this. And let's get the body. Ooh. Okay, sequins face down. Sequins face down. And maybe like that. And let's see what happens. Line it up. Send it on through. So I'm gonna hold this in place because my plate is kind of warped and it wants to make it move, see? And then once it's taken it underneath and the warp is not an issue, it's feeding through just fine. Okay, so I lost the little antennas. I'll have to give that up. But I got the rest of the body. How cute. I wonder if I lose the antennas if I work with fabric. You think that's long? No, I cut it too short. In my exuberance, I cut it too short. Let's see if I cut it too short again. Oh no, that's good. Oh! <laughs> it takes chemically etched dyes, wafer dyes to a whole new place being able to cut all of these fabulous things. Go, go, go. Okay, yay, yay, yay. with non-traditional materials that were normally reserved for steel rule dyes. Oh. Hmm. How thick do we go? All it can do is push it back at me, right? 
how about a super thick woven tapestry? All it can do is push back at me and say no. I've been told no before. Not often. <laughs> but I've been told no before. <laughs> I try to be persuasive in my arguments. <laughs> I cut that very close. I think I'm gonna use a full sheet that way. That's not as close. Oh yeah, I feel better about that. Not as close. I don't know, this is a tightly woven textile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the creaks and cracks. That tells me it's doing something. Oh yeah, that's good. I like that too. Oh my gosh. One tiny, it's not even, it's hanging on by a thread. And I mean that literally. <laughs> okay. What fun you will have. That's amazing. That's amazing. I don't know. size is this one? Is that the, no, that's good. So let's do the big one. Let's see if it'll cut through that. This is a a backed woven type feel, kind of a leather looking thing. So how are we feeling about the switch? I probably should have asked that about an hour and a half ago, <laughs> but it is what it is. Are we loving it? Are we thinking meh? Okay, again, the only thing that's gonna drive me crazy about the black one is that all of the little bits and pieces show. It's just gonna drive me crazy. So that's, that's the only thing that I have about the black one and the fact that it doesn't have oh, anything for free. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, where's that center? Now, I don't know whenever you need a, a black and white with rainbow center, but you can have it. <laughs> Time to move on. Time to move to intricate dies. And that would be my dies. So my dies are very intricate and I make no apologies for it. I like them intricate. I like the idea that you can um, layer on top of each other and mix and match and use. Let's see. I think we'll do I think we'll do this one. So my dies are, each set has four dies. There's a background die that you can choose to use or not, totally up to you. The background dies can be interchanged between the sets and I've got samples to show you that. I always add words or something else into it where there's extra space because I'm paying for the metal so I might as well enjoy it. I might as well get the most out of it. And again, my dies are intricate. So I think I'm going to start with, let's start with die number one, which is the die that has the least intricate parts about it. This is your base die. Die number two has the detail that you're gonna lay into die number one. And die number three is your detail die that puts all the beautiful detail around. So let me cut these in three colors that 
are dramatically different enough so you will be able to see what it is I'm talking about. Let's see. Um, so let's go here and here and here. So we'll just use these three colors. Then that way you're able to see, I'll cut each die in a different color, so then you're able to see the layering. And then we'll do the, we'll do the background in a purple. All right, so I'm gonna start with my base die, which is the one that has the least intricate parts about it. And maybe we will do that in, maybe we'll do that in the blue. All right, well, we'll try it in the blue and see what happens. So I'm gonna cut my paper down to size. This one probably doesn't need a precision base plate, but since I've got it there, I'm just going to keep it there and use it. Get my do not cut plate. Hmm, anybody seen it lately? Oh, found you. Over the top, and now it's getting warped. So I might rotate it, but that means that I'm going to have to kind of hold it into place while my switch machine takes it. And once it's grabbed it, it'll be good to go. Oh, I like the sound of that. Some of you may be going, oh no, what happened? No, I like the sound of that. The machine is gonna tell you if it's not gonna go through. There's my base die, the base of my hot air balloon. Now let's do my secondary die. Take this one off and let's do that in my yellow. And let's cut to the size I need. paper, die, kind of at an angle, because this has the same problem as the embossing folders. I've put a straight edge. I've boxed my die in a, with a frame, so a straight edge. So I don't want that straight edge to hit the roller. I want it to kind of be at an angle, and because my platform is big enough, I can just turn my whole precision base plate at an angle. Let's send it on through. I need to scooch it over just a little bit. And I'm gonna hold my, my um, top plate in place because it's slightly warped. And then once it grabs it, I'm good to go. Again, that sounded pretty good. pieces I need to fall out are going to fall out. And I've started to build my layering. I mean, when you have an intricate die, this is what you hope to see when you take it out, is that you're not struggling and working to get all the little pieces out. So now I've begun. Sorry, Mr. SMS, your floor is gonna be a little bit of a mess. I'm gonna try and hit the trash can, but we'll see what happens. Okay, next die is my top die. And I'm gonna use, should I use the purple or the pink? Maybe I'll use a dark pink. 
and that might show better. Okay, so this is my most intricate die. It's going to layer all the detail to define all of the die out. Bring my platform back over. My die, my paper, I can put that at a slight angle or I can take my whole precision base plate at a slight angle because my platform is big enough. I keep rotating my plate back and forth each time I use it, my top plate, and I'm gonna kind of hold it in place until it grabs it. And then I'm gonna let go. Oh, see, not all the way through. Might require me to rotate and send it back. It's that detailed. Let's see. Or it could be that my top plate is too warped. Let's try. So now I've rotated it this way. I had it going, I had it going this direction. Now I'm just gonna do a slight rotate and see if that will help finish the cut. Sounds promising. Oh yeah, better. change my top plate if that makes a difference. If I change from one that's so warped to something a little flatter. Let's see if that makes a difference. Hmm. So I have this one. It's a little less warped. <laughs> a little less warped. And I have... Oh, they're about the same. I think I'm going to go with this one. Let's try one more time. And let's see what happens. So I guess I really don't have to give you my opinion because you're watching it and you're gonna make up your own mind. So far I think the learning curve has been pretty minute. So let's try with a slightly flatter, not so warped top plate and let's see what I get. And put it on a slight angle. Gosh, I don't know. Maybe this one is as warped as that one. Let's see. It's only paper. See, I think it's as warped. Whoop, let's go back. See, I don't think it likes that. It's. I think it's. I think I've got to keep it pushed down to send it in because it's that warped. No. Nope. See, look at that. All right, let's try with the plate that it comes with. Since it's not warped at all. Let's try one of the plates that it comes with and see how we do there. Oh, look at how flat that lies. <laughs> look at how beautiful that is. <laughs> Oh, if I only had plates like that that lasted all the time. Well, I don't know. I won't know until we get it out. No, see, look at that. All right, let's rotate it. Mm, 
Okay, so I put it in one way and now I'm going to rotate it and put it in another way. Which is what we typically have to do with my dies on a standard manual machine. Turns out you may have to do them with this too. And just for good measure, this is how I fed it in. I'm going to turn it and rotate it this way and just feed it right back on through. Just for good measure. Oh, my plates are warped. Wait, wait, wait. My plates are so off center. Isn't that nice to have the backup button? My plates were so tweaked. So now they're straight. Now let's try. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> well, now it's definitely cut. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> I think the rotation helped. <laughs> wow. Holy smokes, artichokes. So now I've got... I've got my three dies all layered on top of each other to make my robe my flowered hot air balloon. Okay, so let's just try with the background die because the background die is also very detailed. Lots of little bits and lots of little pieces. And you know what? I think I'm going to do it in the blue because it's kind of supposed to be like the sky. So on, I'm going to put it in just like that, center up, send it through, And then I'm just going to rotate it just because and send it back through. I don't know what we're going to get. And your experiences are going to be different than mine because the dyes you own may be different and the paper you use may be different. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that cut. I don't know if you can see it, but that's a gorgeous cut. That just says, I'm just waiting for everything. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Look at it all just fall out. Oh my gosh. In a die cutter's life, that's a happy day. Come on. I got a lot of little itsy curly cues in there. And then I can take it. And now I've got wind blowing behind. Wow, that cut like a dream. The rotate, the rotate really made a difference. It made a huge difference, but we do that in a manual machine too. And maybe I'm just too intricate in my dies. It's possible. I wonder if we took 
What if we took something like this? Plasticky, gold lame -ish. It's got a plastic backing to it. Let's take die number two. And let's see what happens. Look at all my little fallout pieces all over it. <laughs> okay, make sure it's on. So I can square that and rotate that. That's a good idea. And let's send it through. So this is this is a plasticky gold lame fabric that has got a backing to it that might be difficult for this to get through. I don't know, we won't know until we cut. I need to center it on up. I don't know. Usually I can tell by the creaks and the cracks. So I'm sure some of you have had to come back and watch this in chunks. I appreciate you coming back to watch this in chunks. Yes, this is a long YouTube. I agree. But this is not, this is not an inexpensive purchase and this is something you're going to have for a very long time. And it's, it's your crafty budget that you're using. And some of us have a larger budget than others, but we all want to get the most value for whatever money we have. Okay, well, so far so good, right? Holy smokes, artichokes. Okay. There's my background. Holy smokes. Look at that gold. This is not paper. This is fabric. It cut beautifully. Dreamy. Okay, you can do this. Wow. Well, we're a long way into a class, and I would hope. I hope that you would appreciate that it's a free class and it's commercial free. And gosh, if you want to fast forward, I completely understand. But if you're going to invest your hard earned dollars into something, don't you want to know before you buy? Don't you want to see it? Not just, not just cutting paper, not just using thin dyes, but really, really taking it to the next level on things you never even thought possible. I mean, it's beautiful. And this was a this was a wafer die. We did so much today. We really just we cut and we cut and we cut. And I do have beautiful samples for you, and I'll show them to you. But part of the YouTube Yummy really is just going to be my three die sets and the machines and then my tape and my adhesive and things like that. Oh, I just I want to make this into something. I am so not throwing this away. When the girls see this, they are going to knock their socks off. I want to tape it down so it stays in place. But the fabric is, well, it's not <laughs> it's not rigid like paper, but man, is it beautiful. And gosh, when you go to the fabric store, there's so many more choices in fabric than there is in paper. I can get lost in a fabric store. Amazing. So we really have done a lot. And 
again, the, the only things that are going to go into the YouTube Yummies will be my product, my tape, and my um, adhesive, and staples. Staples are what's going to be in the YouTube Yummy. My staple products. And the three dies that I have for you. This is the one that I used right now. It's $29.99. $29.99 gets you all four dies. There are retailers out there that charge close to that price for one. For the three, you're paying anywhere from $60 to $100, or for three dies, four dies up to $100. Elena has put together stellar storyboards for you. So you've got the background, you've got die number two, die number three, well, die number one, die number two, nine, die number three, and the background. And then all the words come with it. And like I said, you could take die number three and put it on die number two and call it done. You could put die number two on die number one and call it done. You could put die number one on die number, it's just, it's crazy. Here are some of the samples. And that's what she's done. She's taken two of them and layered them. All three, all four of them and layered them. Yeah, all four. So the next one I have is the Sunflower Daisies. It has a beautiful background. Wait till you see what the girls have done with it. Again, four dies. These are the four dies that you're going to get. You get the base there, then your secondary die, and then your most detailed die. All the leaves, the butterflies, and the background die so that you are able to mix and match this one on top of this one, this one on top of that one, that one on top of this one. It's all up to you how you want to layer it. And she's put together our storyboards. So we were, our, we'll wait, we're going to wait until the end of this YouTube and then we'll gather all the orders up that need to be shipped by Ellison and we will have them sent out and then we will follow up with my dies and if you happen to buy Stacy tape or sticky dots or whatever. But that's all that's going to be in the YouTube so that we can get you your machines as fast as possible. So it's not going to ship today and it's not going to ship tomorrow. You have to wait until this YouTube finishes. So the next time the YouTube comes around, we will have started to print all the orders and then get them to Ellison so they can ship your machine to you. I love this die. This is my favorite out of all of them because there's so much that can be done with it. Wait till you see the samples. And then Elena's put some of the different backgrounds with some of the different dyes. Oh, that looks really good, huh? Just to give you an idea of what you can do. All right, let me show you samples. First off, SMS dude, James, this is his. I just feel like there's, let me zoom in just a little bit. Now I can zoom in and I can go down just a little bit and get that, there we go. This is SMS guys, James, this is my son. This is his card for this week. He loved the skyline. Have no idea what this means in the moon, but he knows and I guess it's something to do with gaming, so. And he glittered the back. So this is James, and then we're going to move to Claire, and here's Claire's hot air balloon. And her follow your dreams. Have a fabulous day. Oh, Claire, this one's hard. <laughs> the flowers are in there. It's a Where's Waldo card. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, but her next one's stellar. This die is with, this die is with this, so that you could put the, the uh, cityscape behind all of it. This is all on the same set, right? Stellar. And here she just used the background that goes with the sunflowers. That's the background dye. And here she just used the background dye that goes with the hot air balloon. These are beautiful, Claire, beautiful. And then we're gonna go to Doris. Here's Doris's, some flowers, daisies. Then you open it up and she's got the finishing. She's got We Rise by Lifting Others. And you get those words. Those are on one of the sets. And here is Doris's Follow Your Dreams. I told you that's beautiful, isn't it? Follow Your Dreams. Oh, this is my note to... They know the way, and you get those words. Follow your dreams. They know the way. Beautiful. And we've got, ooh, this is gorgeous too. We've got her sunflower daisies. Did she put anything? Nope. <laughs> but I looked. <laughs> oh my gosh, and look at her. Just because I love you, that's why. Look at her hot air balloon filled with flowers. Just because I love you, that's why. Oh, and here she's used the background to the daisies, some flowers. Look at how pretty is that? Nope, I'm always afraid. She marks them, but I'm still afraid. And happy birthday, sunshine. And then we have the longest journey. And this one I'm supposed to open because there's a little blue. The longest journey starts with a single step. Those words you get with the, the, the die. I try to put as much as I possibly can. Let your dreams fly. And here she cut out from the from the background piece from base die. She cut the frame off around it and used that in the center. Let your dreams fly. Beautiful, Doris. Absolutely beautiful. Then we go to Belinda. And I have to say this is just stunning. I think this is just beautiful and so easy. She let the paper do the work. Well done, Belinda. It's beautiful. And I think this one is just stunning. <laughs> oh, I just, nope, nothing. That was it. the longest step. Look at that, it's just beautiful. And then because I asked, where's her cat? Because you guys asked, where's Belinda and her cat? There, she's got a black cat in there for you. Belinda has her, her followers, that is for sure. She sees things differently. I love that about her because all the SMS girls have a, oh, look at how good that looks. <laughs> All the SMS girls have a different viewpoint, a different point of view. And it makes their cards and their projects so interesting and yet not alike. She just kept it simple. And I love this one too.
So I said I wouldn't shortchange you, and I didn't. I did everything I wanted to show you. I know the video's long. Please don't send me hate mail <laughs> that I talk too much or that my videos are too long. These are not a demo. This isn't a 15 minute, let me unbox it in and show you how to cut paper. This is, you're about to make a major investment in your crafty arsenal. Let me be sure you see what you need to see before you plop down that chunk of change. For some of you, this could be game changing. For some of you that need, this is all Elena, I need to tell you that. This is Elena. Um, for some of you, it will be game changing because you will, you will need and want to use an electric machine. For some of you who thought you may want this machine, you had to have this machine, everybody's getting this machine, you may now decide you don't necessarily need it or just the opposite. You could be thinking, oh, what would I do with another machine? Only to have watched this video and say, huh, maybe I do want to have it. But isn't it nice to know before? Oh, Elena, I love this one. She used the background and she used from Chow Bella. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so, squirrel. <laughs> oh, Elena, I like this one too. Oh, and the next one. Oh my gosh, Elena, well done you. Holy smokes, isn't that beautiful? So she's using toppers. She's cutting out from paper, probably Chow Bella, and using them, and this is the background die. And then look at this one. This is stunning. Where she found the paper? Oh, I know where she found the paper. I bet that's hunky dory paper. <laughs> I'm just gonna guess. But look at, isn't that fabulous? Well done, Elena. Okay, now I don't know what I was saying, but I was saying something. I just want you to not feel you have to have everything, but if you do want it, to make sure that you really want it. And then if you do buy it, this is Elena too, and yes, it lights up. Always try to support your independent local retailer. Absolutely, there are other phenomenal online retailers, and, and of course they're gonna have great product at great pricing, but really it's all about supporting the independent because, well, they're the ones who really show you and teach you how to use all that fabulous product they're the ones who get excited when you walk through the door, or when you call them. They're the ones who answer the phones. I'm a little independent retailer. I have answered the phone. Many of you have been, <laughs> there was a call the other day. Isn't this beautiful? Did Elena do this one? Elena did this one. Isn't that fabulous? There was a phone call the other day and, um, and finally she said, and who am I speaking with? And I said, Stacy. And she said, um, how many Stacy's work there? One? <laughs> I could just, there was a slight pause. <laughs> and then she's like, I love your videos. Well, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you supporting us. <laughs> so it was long. It was involved. Things did not go 100% perfect, but we worked it out. We figured it out together. And it's best that you watch me figure it out so that when it happens to you, you know what to do. I don't mind breaking a machine. That's part of my job is to push the machine as hard as I possibly can. Sometimes it's more important to tell you what not to do and how not to use something than to show you how fabulous it is and how to use it. Because sometimes what not to do, well, once you do it, there's no going back. So, Please keep in mind we are limited into how many machines I can get. I did not place an initial order. I was not planning on carrying this machine. It is not shipping from Scrapbooking Made Simple. I just can't do it. Our prices are priced on the machine and there is no free shipping, even if you spend $50 or more. So if you were to buy the machine and my dies, you'll get the dies with no shipping, but the shipping will be included on the machine. You'll have to pay for shipping. There's just no way around it. However, I've tried to make the price the best I possibly could to make it affordable for everybody. And machines are kind of like electronics. There's not a lot of margin in them. But if you don't have a machine, you can't do any of this. You gotta start with a machine. Now it might be a manual machine that you want, 
It may be the switch. It may be Tim's switch. It may be Sizzik's switch that gives you the extra freebies. You decide. I've given you the information and hopefully you treasure it and you value it and you didn't think that this was a complete waste of your time. And if you did, please don't tell me. <laughs> I'm okay not knowing. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com with the do's and don'ts of the Sizzix switch machine for 2022. I'll see y'all later. Bye.